What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is August 28th. It's a Saturday, not a Thursday, that we are supposed to do this on, I guess. Technically, if we have rules or something, which I don't think we really abide by rules. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Got Our Attention Podcast Season 2, Episode 11. And I'm here with Brian, Phoenix Nova. Also, Kelly, Day Drinker What's up, ATL. guys? And we got some stuff to talk about today. Typically, which is why we do this. Uh, and usually we just make up a lot of it. Uh, so why not? We <laughs> don't mean, make it we up. We show up because we have stuff to talk about. I'm still shocked, Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and she's and still with us. Yeah, I, I know <laughs> a little bit. Uh, we might touch on this a little bit uh, more later, but I'm still shocked that the genesis of the day drinker wasn't the day walker. Uh, I know. Uh, like, like, uh, like, uh, I mean, look at you. The oh. the alabaster skin. The oh, wow. ever youthful looks. I mean, yes. you are a vampire. My thingy uh, teeth. But sh- How many yeah, thousands of years old are you? Uh, uh, like this three. Is, this is not Japanese anime. Okay. Uh, and she's also not wearing young, gym man. shorts. 3,000 3, years? That's not too bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean. So bad. Well, I'm excited because <laughs> tomorrow is my next year around the sun. Uh, so that'll be cool. And the start of your mm-hmm. next the next revolution next age around of my the life. Sun. Yeah, apparently. So it is not it's, be a revolution. All right. Those are listening. It's not like a special birthday or anything. Why are you sending that back to me? That was weird. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's not like a special birthday or anything. I don't have like it's not like a golden birthday or like I'm turning 50 or anything like that. It's just a normal. You're birthday. not. But no, not, I thought not, it was your 50th. Yeah, it's not my 50th. Not not yet. Weird. Close, close. But yeah, it's it's just whatever. Should, but I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have I'm some, to return some that time. card. This is gonna be ah uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> take some time and go drink some beer at breweries and uh, walk around and see how much beer I can drink until uh, you know I get taken home. Essentially, is what's gonna happen. So <laughs> taken uh, home or hopefully sent home. <laughs> hopefully uh, cognizant of what's happening. Most likely won't be, but that's fine. It's it's the one day of the year that I I get the excuse to that, do that. Not be true. rude. I'm not saying be rude in public. Not say that. Just able to drink a little more than usual. Which is a lot, because usually you drink a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give you that it's your one year that you have what in your mind is the excuse that certainly does explain why you do it other times of the year. That's don't worry about that. That's just, just sweep that on the carpet. No problem. <laughs> We're just going to we're just going to overlook this. It's not because let's not let's not be shy about the fact that it's mm. not the only time of the year that you do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, so so this week coming up, I actually took and off. in all reality with the amount that uh, that uh, you typically consume, you would think that this is your like 21st birthday. Yes. Every every year is my 21st birthday. It's so, the anniversary of your 21st birthday. Yeah. That's how yeah, I yeah, yeah, it. That's it. It really technically it I, is. Yeah. I, so. I have a girlfriend who was like, oh, I'm not. I'm turning 27. It's the sixth anniversary of my 21st birthday. And yeah, I was like, totally. I get that. I like that. I'm going to start using that. I'll have to count. I'll have to count it up tomorrow mm-hmm, and figure out what that mm-hmm. day is. Yeah, but that's OK. I, I say things like I've turned 35. Yeah, 15 <laughs> or 20 times. <laughs> so next week, I actually took off work. Uh, and the reasoning why is because typically we're now in con season. This is like mm-hmm. the week of Dragon Con. So Dragon Con starts this Wednesday upcoming and uh, but I will not be attending this year for the second year in a row. Uh, I'll Sad. be well, I'll be attending virtually at that. So I guess it's kind of good and bad. Good is or bad is I don't get to go physically and go attend and hang out and do all the fun stuff um, that we would typically do that in the circa 2019 era. <laughs> um, but now I get to stay home and do it virtually along with the PAX, PAX West. Uh, because they'll be doing online content as well. So I get to kind of pick and choose the con content that I want versus Are like you just jump into one. the news all of a sudden. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm just saying, like, that's what I'm doing this week. Like, I'm off and it's great. He's like, yeah, so, unfortunately, I'm not going anywhere. But I know Brian is going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? Brian? So, again, are we just jumping to the news? No. Because that's, that's okay. my whole news thing later about going to oh. Pax West. <laughs> nah, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to PAX West. Yeah, which is cool. And that, that was a plan for us to actually go to. 
Mm. Um, but it's just hard with a, like a new child. Like it's it, the world is not right. And he's he's ready for the world. Well, the world's not necessarily ready for him. Um, so we're kind of. Oh, my God. The world is never going to be ready for oh, that. Little another tornado another, of, another, like, another <laughs> mini mic. Oh, oh God, man. No. He is. He is. We, uh, we can't handle the one we have already. Yeah. <laughs> He eats yeah, but so much food. It's ridiculous. Oh, much worse than Mike. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, because he's super cute and he knows it. Like he he flirts <laughs> he with women all it. the time, all the time. He, he like he does this like little like arm thing and like his little head down. He his, like does this shy and like he waves at them. His, like that's what he does. He's like so he, cute. like you take him places. He just like looks around like he's scanning the room and then he's like, oh, OK. And he'll like kind of like you know, kind of move close, like throw his arm out, try to get attention, like drops the napkin or something. He does that kind of stuff. It's ridiculous. Like, oh, my goodness. He is. He's a trip. But you are in trouble. sir. I am in, in trouble. trouble. I, I, I'm the, the only thing that can make this worse or could have made this worse is if he was a girl. And oh, yes. Right, he is oh, not. Yes. Absolutely. But you if, if wow. you have a son, if you have a son, you have to worry about what he's going to do. With his little peener. Yeah. yeah, That's yeah. A but very if you have statement. a girl. Yep. If you have a girl, you have to worry about all the, all peeners. the other peeners. Yeah. peeners. Which yeah. is a, a a blessing and a curse. <laughs> like, if I know growing up, the them. stuff that I did. Oh, God. Oh. I can't even imagine. Yeah. yeah sorry. No, uh, sorry, I, day drinker. I yeah, can't. I, I can't. I, my husband oh, and I man. actually had this same conversation um, earlier. this, or I guess it was last week. How good is like, he at construction? Is he can he like build a really good type box? Like, is he good at doing that? Oh, like, he's an engineer. He's a, he's a professional <laughs> oh, engineer. Well, then he, you're he fine. Has, I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like he and also has access to concrete. Oh, nice. Cement, concrete. No, well, that would be for the yeah. the boys that would come over so you can drop them to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, or if the backyard like we need a new slab for something <laughs> yeah yeah come over i actually need you to come over i know you're the the boyfriend i need you to come over and actually help me dig this hole yeah uh, don't I've worry heard, about the, don't worry about what it's for wor- no we'll we'll be using it soon <laughs> don't worry <laughs> uh i'm gonna need you to dig another one over here unless, yeah. yeah you have friends right yeah you do. okay yeah. so how many friends do you have five okay we're gonna dig six holes out here for well, me again <laughs> yeah you have two yeah there's gonna be 12 12 <laughs> holes out here we're gonna but do, you'll, but we're gonna you'll have a team of, of people like to, to come build this, like to dig these holes. And then yes. you know, they won't. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm trying to get good Listen, with the parents. Like, it's fine. It's totally now, fine. I'm not a lawyer, but as a concerned friend, <laughs> I'm thinking that this whole conversation should probably stop before it gets used against you in a future litigation. <laughs> True. But this is this is being this is all jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> We're all joking here. Isn't this funny talking about death? Uh, yeah, it's great. Everything's fun. Yeah, Everything's fun. Killing fine. people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, just wait until oh, Halloween season starts and we are going to uh, well, talk I think a lot about We're oh, almost a week snap. out, right? Isn't that, we isn't that true? We are less than a week out. Yeah. So For apparently. Those, yeah, go ahead. Wait, oh. you haven't started Halloween already? Uh, well, first of all, Halloween is a lifestyle. She hasn't told anybody yet. <laughs> yes. It is a lifestyle. But it is also a season, not a holiday. Oh, I'm 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 totally in like hashtag Kelly is going to cosplay. At yes. Some point. Yes. I like that. I Man, I'm not working right now, so I'm that's, you I'm could be totally building a right. costume right now. I, I could actually this is the podcast interrupted all of that. So, ah. you know, this is <laughs> got it. No, Halloween season starts September 1st, and that is the only time my husband finds that it is. He he th- he thinks it's still unacceptable, but he turns a blind eye to me decorating my house. You mean like the cockroaches so, coming out of the sink and yes. like the you know the yes. toilet and stuff? Like, yeah, I yes. would say that's probably something I would you know probably complain yeah. about. Too. <laughs> You're around. I, I will. I I will. So while I have not been a very good social media director, I will promise to upload lots of. Halloween season content and my decorating progress nice. to our Instagram uh, or I guess maybe technically Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, whatever. Yeah. 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 All of it. Um, and you can just you you can judge. You can totally judge how crazy I am, how Ooh, that's nice, nice my husband is to. That's also a large put up, put up with. <laughs> 
<laughs> all of this. Yes. The patience of my husband. Um, also, maybe you the weirdness of my kids who think it's the, awesome, too. <laughs> you just ask the Internet to judge you. Yeah. It's OK. There's anyone. Listen, they're already doing it. judging. They're yeah. already doing it. Well, so. disclaimer, I've been to Day Drinker's house for Halloween mm -hmm. for like a Halloween party, like a shindig that she's throwing mm -hmm. in her house. It and I will say shindig. for the uh, like the aesthetic of like Halloween going to her house, like mm -hmm. uh, the whole house, like every nook Everything. and cranny is there for a reason. And yes. like, like I, I point out the cockroaches because in the bathroom, <laughs> there's like a stream of cockroaches coming out like these little fake ones that are like glued, like yes. glued down, like glued down. Yes. That I, are like I, stuck I, up the wall, up to the sink. So you're like kind of walking in like the lights are like, it's like glow lights or whatever, like uh, black lights. And it's like, you're walking in, you're like, what the hell? What and then the? of course, as a man, like I go to lift the toilet seat up to use the bathroom and there's like one glued inside of the lid which <laughs> freaks you out as you go to use the bathroom and yeah it's it's just a it's a crazy time at their but the party is also really fun i will say like the party now, is just fun like it's a yeah. it's a blast there's music mike like live there's music people are just like playing instruments and stuff yeah. like so much fun yeah mike so, something you said needs to have to be unpacked, <laughs> unpacked. i don't know if you know this but <laughs> Girls lift the lid too. That's a key. Pee doesn't oh, magically no, go meant, through the lid. He meant the toilet seat. So yeah, I the toilet always, seat. I know. Yeah, <laughs> but he said, he said the he lid. Did say no, lid. Girls he don't use the bathroom. Lid, yes. What are you talking about, Brian? I don't know what you're talking about. We just oh, magically. My, my wife will insist that rose petals fall out of her ass instead of farting. Yeah. No, I have them some we don't old sweat. We rose glow. petals. <laughs> Oh, actually, she actually doesn't sweat. Oh, like, well, it's it's she, bizarre. I mean, that would be nice. Yeah, to, mine doesn't she also, sweat she as well. She also has those jeans. Unless, like, a long time of working well, out. Well, her she looks pretty good in those mm. jeans too. Uh, but yeah. uh, she also doesn't get brain freeze. Oh. Oh. See, the sweat, the sweat step. didn't Challenge really bother accepted. you too much. <laughs> but we can now, make that happen get, tomorrow. We might she need she to. She does not get brain freeze. We might need to like study her copy her genetics you, yeah. yes like you know she's actually is she actually alive like do you know that she's actually alive like she's not a vampire uh, people have asked the same thing about me <laughs> <laughs> so well i guess the question is to you now then are you also <laughs> oh, love it. hey let's, i mean i'm sitting here i'm talking to you in a normal tone of voice yeah right oh my god i do not know what you're talking about let's get the corner. <laughs> where's my music I did it. The Kelly dance. Uh, Damn it. I did it. So I, I, I have ah, had, we got him dancing. <laughs> yes. I did yes. it. Damn it. Oh God. I have had, uh, a, a rough week. A very <laughs> As Mike emotional says, week. it's been a week. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's been a, 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 a different week than usual. And, um, I was looking for things to cheer me up and, uh, my husband is a, a Facebook freak like he that that is his main source of entertainment he he can just he oh, looks, finds definitely articles entertainment. And, yes <laughs> he it, it finds some interesting stuff there um there's a magazine i, I used to read uh that turned to just uh a online platform called mental flops and they bring out some of uh, they they put out like x number of facts about blah 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 or you know an article about really interesting stuff. He was like, Hey, I just ran across this article. It's called 15 fun facts about Ferris Bueller's day off. And I was like, that's it. I'm talking about that. Like I was like, send it to me. I need it. Um, I am a mega fan. Like as I think most people in my generation are. of, And Ferris if you're Bueller's not, you, you are, but you don't realize where it came from. Like the movie. Yes. Like, yes. You, 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 there are so many, pop culture yeah. things that, that, that are reference that reference Ferris Bueller's day off. So like American pie is like my generation. Like when I grew yeah. up, like that was the movie I was in high school watching. Mm. And of course, oh. a lot of that came from oh, Ferris Bueller's yeah. day off. Like that's literally like the, the essence of that, that teen genre, like that yeah. whole, you know, getting away with stuff in high school, which is crazy. So it, it's definitely a movie that everybody can reference and, nobody I've never heard of anybody. And if you say you don't like Ferris Bueller's day off, you're going to have to email us at 
Yeah. Uh, you gotta take time G- out of your day and G- email G-O-A us to tell us. Teamingtime.com because I just want to find out that one person. Who yeah, tell me why. Give me a convincing story yes, of why the movie please. sucks, and then yes. you know, we'll read yeah. it or something, or we we'll trash it. It's fine. Whatever. We'll <laughs> read. You'll find out when you come back and listen. One to this second. Yeah. Okay. Something started playing on my PC. Sorry. Um, if okay. you call me not alive, the day drinker <laughs> robot just stopped functioning for a second. It did. She like, rebooted. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> all uh, right. There's lots of things happening in my ear suddenly. Um, all right. So I'm not going to read all 15 facts. I'm just going to read the ones that I thought were most. It sounds like Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, the first one being um, that Matthew Broderick and Alan Ruck, who played Cameron, um, were actually friends before the shooting of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, and Alan Ruck was 30 years old when he played Cameron. Um, and as a older lady myself, I love it. So I feel like I could play somebody much younger. I shaved my beard. I could look really young. Yeah, that's Typically. true. I say I, that. I, well, I, I shaved, don't watch anymore. I shaved my beard for the podcast, too. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> that's what she said. Weird. Okay. My yeah. lady beard. I said that's what um, she said. Sorry. <laughs> Do we have to drink for that one? Yep. If you're listening, drink. That's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, and they at one point um, even sh- shared a trailer because um, Matthew Broderick had a bigger trailer. They were besties, and so he moved on in. Had a bigger trailer. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, Molly Ringwald wanted to play Sloan, Ferris's girlfriend, and um, the the director uh, didn't think that the part was big enough for her, so he said no. But he was shocked to find out that Mia Sarah, who ended up playing Ferris Bueller's girlfriend, uh, was only eighteen years old at the time. She definitely looked older than eighteen. I thought. Yeah. No, it's funny um, on that because like sorry to, to sidebar mm-hmm. it but like like with uh um the 70s show like mila kunis started the show at like 14 that's true and they were oh like yeah gosh. she's she's 18 it's great everything's fine she can play a high schooler it's like yeah because she's 14, 14. <laughs> like still like that's that true. happens it's weird that like on the other the flip side of it but yeah. like it's it's still funny yeah um love was in the air uh is number six on this list matthew broderick and jennifer gray jennifer gray played matthew uh, ferris's sister they got engaged they met fell in love got engaged on the set uh it didn't work out obviously did 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 you know that also while they were this is not Mm -hmm. a fun fact Mm -hmm. while they were (laughs) involved uh, they were on a vacation in, I think, Northern Ireland. And this is why Matthew they're... Broderick was driving. Mm-hmm. They rented BMW. Oh, this part. And this is sad. Very, very much because of used to driving in the US, he ended up going into the wrong lane and crashed into a car head on. Um, and that's it... Jennifer Gray, uh, because the unfortunate accident and the people in the other car passing away uh jennifer gray uh couldn't she she blames that really is like her grief over that not blames it but her grief over that uh was why she couldn't even really enjoy uh the success that mm-hmm. her movie that had just come out um that's part is why they you know, broke up too yeah it's probably why they broke up too uh so while yeah. dirty dancing took off for her and probably would have like taken her places. She actually withdrew from acting for a little bit too. Yeah. But wah, wah. <laughs> it's the most inappropriate wah, wah I've heard <laughs> yeah. since Mike last did listen, it. I said, listen, I've had a wow, really, really, like I said, a, a, a really rough week. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, that was, that was good. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, but back to the fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the love. Um, Cindy Prickett oh, and Lyman Ward, who were Ferris's parents in the movie, actually got married and had two kids. They met Ooh. on set also, got married and had two kids. Did they name their kid Ferris? No. <laughs> I don't know what they named their kid, but it was Opportunity Ferris. lost. Yeah. 
That'd be funny if their daughter was Jeannie, though. That's true. <laughs> so uh, Matthew Broderick uh, can do most of the choreography uh, during the parade scene because he had actually hurt himself while he, doing the scene of running through the backyards. Um, so there was a lot of choreography he was supposed to be doing, uh, but he can do. But there is also a random shot of a construction worker dancing during that scene. And that was a real construction worker who was actually doing construction and just started dancing because this is what was going on. I thought that was super cute. Um, Charlie Sheen stayed up for more than two days to pl to play the part in the scene where he's in the police station. So he really was that crazy and Delirious. Delirious. Yeah. So and it worked. Um, the Fer yeah, the Ferrari in, in Ferris Bueller's Day Off was not real. It was actually a replica. There were actually three replicas. One of those replicas. Yeah. One of those replicas, though, sold for two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars in twenty thirteen. A because replica. Yeah. Yes. Of the movie. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of, a lot of movies you see when you have cars that are like whatever type of sports car they're mm. always replicas they're always yeah. like basically a box build or they just like put the the siding on and it's it's a you know whatever car it is like yeah because like why especially with a lot of cars when you like wreck them like they're like fast and furious for example like why would you yeah. spend all the money to wreck that vehicle like that's a lot of cost that you don't need to spend so yeah yeah some of the original fast and furious cars uh the ones that did make it out of the movie and that wasn't too many. Apparently some of those sold for quite a bit too. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the Cubs game that Ferris and his friends attended um, and that the principal uh, watched while he was at the pizza joint are two different games. One of them was Cubs versus the Montreal Expos. The other was as an ATLer. Uh, or AT alien, uh, a Braves versus Cubs game. There you go. And they said they, they chose them because that that season, the 1985 season, their um, uniforms were so similar that they figured nobody would notice. And <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> uh, the last uh, fun fact I have for you is that the very first version of the film was awful. Um, Matthew Broderick, Alan Ruck and Mia Sarah watched the movie and thought they didn't last laugh once and they thought they had made an awful movie. So um, Hughes and Hirsch worked for two weeks, recutting, repasting, and then finally created the the, the version that we know today. So Wow, that's cool. I didn't know um, that. That was cool. Yeah. Sweet. That's some interesting news, I guess. You yes. Could say. yes. I mean, I, I it's, it's funny because like I brought up last week some some things that obviously weren't new, like the mm. library for Minecraft and stuff. But it's like some of these things like, a lot of people don't get. And like, yeah. I'm kind of like I wouldn't say a history buff, but I love learning like history and stuff like a lot of Me like too. random like facts and like videos of like how things mm. became out of like, you know, and like stuff like that really is awesome to hear. So like, yeah. you know, I didn't know this before, but now I do. And it's, it's cool. I can put that in my, my trivia bank. So when I go play trivia in the future yes. of someday, when I get to go back to a bar to play trivia, which will probably yes. never happen again, but uh, one day I'll be able to do that. It'll be great. And I'll yeah. lose every question because I suck. But anyway, <laughs> minor detail. All right. So I've taken up a lot of time. I think we'll jump on into the news. Get your paper out. Coming to you live on Twitch <laughs> on Saturday night at 10.05. It's a lot longer clip than I thought it was. <laughs> We've got Zeissy here coming to you live, reporting on some new news. That Was that good? Did that I, was did good. I do it? Okay, good. It wasn't great. But it's working. It's working for you, though. We'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll perfect it. <laughs> we we'll call it working, Bob. <laughs> yeah, it is. That is that. So there has Ooh. been if you're familiar with Twitch, if if you are a streamer on Twitch or even if you mm -hmm. attend Twitch streams, there's been a lot of like and this is something that's actually been on the topic for a while. Like, but there's a lot of uh, hate streams, hate not streams, mm -hmm. hate uh, raids, hate groups, hate bots that just flood channels <sighs> to just just spew out the most 
despicable stuff that they can potentially type because mm. keyboard warriors love to just throw out the most ridiculous things. And it's been it's been growing in the Twitch community. And there's been a lot of things that Twitch hit. We we've we I say we content creators, people who are streaming on Twitch like right now, like we are and along with everybody else. We've complained about things like this. We've talked it. We've we've submitted feedback. We've we've been on post boards and we've said all these things. And Twitch comes out and says certain things that we are still not like they, they very much blanket everything like, oh, we're working on this. Like we agree. And it's like, but but like nothing's really being done. And, and here it is. Mm-hmm. We're still seeing like hate raids like raids will start up on Twitch. So if you're not familiar with the raid on Twitch is basically like a streamer starts a stream. They have a lot of people joining them on a view like viewing. So they have, like let's say, 100 people viewing them and they can start a raid on another streamer and bring all of the people watching their stream to their stream. So it just Which takes in like a hundred people. What would be a very Good positive thing. thing. I, yeah. I, I have been part of other Twitch streams where a content creator has said, this is such a great stream. There's still a lot of people here, guys. We're going to raid another mini maker or we're going to raid another cook or, and it's like in, in, in one of them I was on, she was like, I'm a female mini maker. I'm going to find another female mini maker. Right. We're going to raid her stream. And everybody raided her. It was fun. It was great. We all, you know, ended up following her. It it was a very positive experience. And that's how I feel like the, it, well, the, the, that's, the intent should be. Yeah. Right. And that's the way it yeah. was designed. Mm-hmm. The way it was designed well, to be. Does, was no, that, whoa, 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 whoa. It was not designed. Raids happen naturally from people being yeah. people. Well, there, there now, literally later, is a raid like, button. Yes, well, is what I'm saying. There is now. There is now. Right. That was but the raids, way it was designed. Like, yeah. That's my point. Yeah, but raids happen naturally long before they put that button in. That's yeah, why I'm saying raids aren't designed. Uh, but uh, and, and because of that, I would likely think that some of the hate raids are actually not using necessarily that raid button, which makes it that much harder to like shut them down as well. Uh, but yeah, but the point is, so all of this thing has been happening to the point where it's getting kind of out of hand and a lot of streamers yeah. kind of got together. A lot of the, the more popular streamers have gotten together and they started a hashtag a day off Twitch. And this is, Roughly supposed to happen the day of September 1st. So next Wednesday, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, they're going to not stream on Twitch for the day for for that day, just to kind of, you know, give it to the man, like stick it to the man of Twitch. Because if I mean, and we've talked about this, like in the gaming world, like we vote with our wallet, mm-hmm. right? So if we're yes. not on Twitch, if those people are not on Twitch and they're not making the subs or they're not getting the donations, or the viewership that they typically do Twitch, the website does then that potentially could hurt them and should hurt them. Right. Well, Uh, and they're also asking that people not only that the streamers don't stream, but they're asking people don't watch anything on Twitch for September 1st as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we as SAS gaming are also going to participate in this and we are going to choose a different platform next week to stream from. Uh, so you'll you'll you find if you follow our social media stuff, we will definitely uh, let you know which platform those are. Uh, and we may even do multi stream. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but we'll definitely pick one of those platforms and let you guys know um, because it isn't right. I mean, hate yeah. is just ridiculous. I mean, it's especially keyboard warriors. I hate keyboard warriors. It's so ridiculous, like, mm. but it's just not worth it. And, you know, if they're going to make a stand for this, I'll make a stand too. like, why not? Like, this is, this is what we do have. This is the the pen and paper that I can fight with. Right. And, and this is what we're going to do. So, um, yeah. we will definitely stand with, with the, uh, a day off Twitch next week and we will, you know, and it may be a day, a week off Twitch for us. We may actually pick a platform yeah. next week and just, just ride with it. Uh, and because see what, happens. what makes it a little different is that we're not scheduled to broadcast on the first yeah anyway yeah true. so well, naturally we we're scheduled off on the to first. broadcast today so, either but <laughs> well yeah that's true but uh yeah. i mm. so <laughs> Not our, wrong. our normal broadcast day would be the 31st and the second uh mm. so mike and i were talking about it and we just said we'll just broadcast on a different platform anytime we want to broadcast mm-hmm. next week since we normally aren't on the first yeah we can at least show some of our support that way yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's getting out of hand. And and the one thing that I wanted to mention with this, too, is, you know, Twitch, this is not the first time that anything like this is brought up with Twitch. Like they've been multiple things in the past that we've covered that like yeah. even when they got the new emote, like when we found out that mm. the, I can't remember the streamer's name that and it doesn't even matter at this point, but like found out like some dirt on him. And we we're like, oh, God, that's bad. So they changed the like the actual emote um, to the lizard, like the lizard actually won. Um, I can't remember what it was called, like the, uh, the what was it? Well, pod, I mean, you're, you're uh, jumping over stuff, stuff too. Stuff. Yeah. You're jumping over stuff too because they they settled on the lizard because they were going to have it go between different streamers. Yeah, it was between and it went every through week. at least right, right. That's it went yeah, through it. Yeah, it went through at least two different streamers, and both those streamers got hate rates. Yeah, yeah. yep. That's what I, that's what I was referring to. So it's yeah. it's not a new thing. This is not like some people are being sensitive and they're just like, oh, we're gonna just stop streaming. No, this is like a big deal and. And again, Twitch has been the platform ever since Mixer died, you know, a year and a half ago at this point. Um, you know, there is no other like YouTube does it. Facebook does it. But it's, nobody's as large as Twitch as far as like content, like having someone stream games and things like that. They're, they're the leading competition. That's it. And for people to stand up and try to, you know, because, I mean, it's a weird relationship, right? Like you have Twitch and you have the streamers, the content creators and you know, the content creators need Twitch because mm -hmm. they got to be able to put their platform like their their content out there for people to watch. But at the same time, Twitch needs the streamers so they can make the money from all the advertisements and all of the, the subscriptions and all the things that people pay into. So, right. you know, taking one of those variables away definitely will hurt the other one. But at the same time, it's hurting. It's like a double edged sword, like the content mm -hmm. creator not publishing on Twitch is going to get hurt because they're not publishing on Twitch. Whereas Twitch will get hurt because there's no ad revenue. There's no you know revenue on streaming subscriptions or whatever. And so it, it's it's kind of weird. So the only way to do this is in a large scale. If everyone were to do this, then it would it would definitely make an impact. But even just saying that you're that it's going to happen in the pl publicity around. I've, I've seen a ton of ads, the publicity around the day off Twitch. Is enough to make a stand. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I think, you know, doubling down and actually staying off Twitch will definitely help. So yeah. speaking of doubling down and staying off of Twitch, what a great segue to just lead this off with. So after this was announced, <laughs> uh, another company, which is not a new company. So Streamlabs, if you're familiar, if you're a streamer, content creator, uh, you're very familiar with Streamlabs. So Stream Elements, Streamlabs, there's different uh different companies that do this, but uh, stream labs is owned by Logitech. So if you're familiar with like the maker of like micro uh, mouse and keyboard and stuff like that, they, they own this company called stream labs and stream labs recently. So stream labs, if you're not familiar, it's a, it's a, a product that you can like a software you can use. It's an overlay um, that you can use as a streamer that makes everything very easy. So if you want to have like animations and things, you can just like, click a button or drag it over. If you want to like have tips and like, you know, things like that. You can just click a button. It does all the like the magic for all the API, all the writing of code for you. Just click and drag it. So you don't have to like be like super into like all this stuff to like understand how to just stream. If you just want to like do something like you said, like tiny builds or whatever. So stream mini labs came making, out not mini tiny making builds, whatever <laughs> it's tiny house. Uh, so the That's totally different. I totally know. different. I know. So funny. <laughs> I watched the tiny house like build whatever. Um, so awesome. Streamlabs comes out recently and says that they're going to allow anybody that will they can you can stream now on Streamlabs website. You can actually stream to their website, and they're going to allow streamers to have a tip button. Well, their tips are going to be a hundred percent given back to the streamer. Outside of the asterisk, which is outside of the normal PayPal fees that PayPal is going to take. So they use PayPal to wow. do all those transactions. So whatever percentage that PayPal gets for the transaction, they're going to get. But the actual money, 100% of that is going to go to the streamer. Whereas wow. Twitch takes 50% of every action that happens on Twitch, whether it's a sub, tipping, whatever, they take 50%. Uh, so yeah. they are coming at this at a different angle. percentage, too. Yeah. Mm hmm so, well, and it goes it goes even deeper than that, because Streamlabs is it's not just tips, it's the subscriptions as well. Mm -hmm. And Streamlabs is actually letting the creators set 
the subscription prices and price points as opposed to Twitch, where it's set at five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So at least they American, can anyway. choose how much they want for the different subscription levels uh, that people can pay in. Which, interestingly enough, is how like another site used to do it. Yeah. Only fans. And OnlyFans quickly backed away from that because uh, they had a woman who had become like an overnight millionaire, literally, mm. because she charged $200 to get access to something, which she was also disingenuous. She said that it was going to be wasn't. this and it really yeah. wasn't that. Yeah. She, so what had she was going to be naked and she wasn't. Um, yeah. Oh, then no. they had to so, refund, my refund. Her, all those people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, that's the interesting thing is because they paid her extremely quickly because mm -hmm. that's the other thing they had. They had yeah. a very quick turnaround for payment. And then all of a sudden people were asking for refunds and they were processing the refunds. And she goes, uh -uh, this is my money. So there was a whole problem mm -hmm. there too. This yeah. um, also. And it's, go ahead. And, and uh, sorry, this is a quick story. No, you're good. Uh, Go I remember it. being in an Uber once and uh, did not have the. Wait, you uh, remember? Being I, it in was Uber? a lift. It was a lift. Yeah, I, I was out going to the airport, so I was to stone cold sober. Um, and <laughs> that's the best time to be drinking. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'd started drinking at the airport. Trust me. Um, but she was like, "Did there you know that what you pay Lyft?" I don't get all of that money. I was like, yeah, when, well, yeah. yeah. So businesses work. <laughs> you think they just give you the app for free? Like, like who, who pays for the create? I was like, oh, okay. so it's funny because we, we were actually it was like me. And I mean, Phoenix, I don't think it's fair amount, but me yeah. and Phoenix were uh, actually I, I talking about this whole scenario uh, probably a few months ago. We were on the way somewhere in the car and we were just talking about uh, Twitch at the time about whatever was happening with Twitch because it was crazy. And we were like, man, it was the last time that you <laughs> like had an excuse. Yeah, right. If I remember correctly. Yeah. So it was like Twitch did something and we were like, man, there was only a platform that would like try Twitch because rewind. Like I said, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. Mixer tried to do this. Mixer tried to be a separate platform that streamers could use. Content creators could use to get their information out there and do whatever they want and also be able to receive payment and, you know, be able to make a living off of this. Right. And to me, at least to my opinion, Mixer backed by Microsoft because owned by Microsoft mm -hmm. was they, they were a little, uh, I can't think of the word at the moment, but they were, they were very like, like trying to jump into this really quickly. So they immediately made contracts with, with uh, Ninja. They immediately made contracts with shroud and they're paying like uh, big dollars, but yeah, but they but right. But I mean, they paid big dollars for these people to like think because but they thought by bringing these big people in, it would bring in all the, the, the people who were watching the viewers like over like these hundreds of thousands of people who watch them every time, which I mean, some of them did, but nobody else was on the platform out there that they knew. Right. right. Like there was other people just streaming, but like they didn't have enough pull for them to be able to stay afloat. And eventually what happened was Mixer ended up back and out microsoft was like yeah we're done with this like we don't need that anymore right. like whatever and so that it's interesting so we have stream labs who is going to start that platform up to give the streamers the content creators a better avenue of making money so they're not like getting taxed so hard on this i guess you could say um but we'll have to just see how it pans out because it is going to be a battle especially like your your competitor is twitch and like yeah, everybody's on. We're on Twitch right now. Hello, <laughs> we're, streaming we're talking on about Twitch. this on Twitch. And uh, and it's it's an interesting thing to think about because it is going to be a hard battle. But if they can keep playing their cards right and slowly start building and they have the money to back that slowly start building the viewership and the, the streamers on their platform oh. like this could potentially because Streamlabs is already kind of popular with the streamers. If they could do that and they could start slowly bringing like a, a competition to Twitch where people would actually consider maybe moving over, especially if they make more money. I don't think they got the infrastructure for it. I mean, I don't, the... from what I see right now, no. I mean, if Elgato were to say the same thing, oh if Elgato God. was like, we're going to start a website, I'd be like, 
I, be, I mean, Elga- I don't think Elgato does. I mean, I would El- sit, I would Cors- at least sit back El- with a you know can of popcorn and start Elgato. eating it. Like. Yeah, <laughs> Elgato is Corsair. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's a hardware manufacturer, yeah. just like Log- Logitech is is a Swiss manufacturer of of Log- uh, of hardware peripherals. They made the first commercially available mouse in 1981, um, so they have been around for a while. But it, and yes, they they picked up Streamlabs for 89 million. Yeah. yeah, 89 million is not an infrastructure back. Yeah. No, no, for sure. No, I, I get that. that I it's mean, just in the that's, future. But that's, but that's the problem. That's the problem is you yeah. have to have the infrastructure background cap, but PG rated. Keep that tail down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Tail down. So, uh, nope. There we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, like that, I, that's the main problem, though, is is they have to have the infrastructure to be able to support the number of people watching it so mm-hmm. that they can support the ads. Yep. And it's they've got this problem of who's going to bell the cat like they, they you need the amount of people coming there to be able to do the ads. And to do that, you have to have the people streaming on it in order to get the people coming there. Right. Yeah. And they can't do either of those if they don't have the infrastructure. Yep. So now, fortunately, one of the things that Streamlabs does do, one of the options or at least features that uh, they have that you didn't talk about is they have built into their product multi-streaming, which is that you stream to multiple stream content providers at the same time. You send your broadcast out YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and now apparently Streamlabs yeah. all at the same time. So I, I could see some content providers actually dipping their toes in it by going ahead and streaming simultaneously between their favored content provider and Streamlabs at the same time. And then that makes Streamlabs happy. And then they like try to start to build their, you know, build their audience over on that side. And again, the hope is, is that Streamlabs keeps up with the infrastructure so that they can actually build that. Cause if they don't, this is dead in the water. Yep. So anyway, that's the news we have on the Twitch information. So next week, if you are listening or you're watching the podcast, we're definitely going to be on a different place next week, uh, but we'll, we'll put it out. Yeah. Social media director's got it. She's got it on lock. She'll, she'll let you know as soon mm-hmm. as we got this. So she'll touch it. Let she'll let you know. Um, also, the yeah. 89 million that Logitech paid for Streamlabs in 2019. That's actually less than what Mixer paid Ninja to come over and stream on Mixer. <laughs> <laughs> like Logitech bought an entire company. And, and see, that, yeah. that's why I'm talking about the size of the infrastructure here. Mixer had mm all of Microsoft's backbone to work with, and they still couldn't bring down Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. But this is a gaming podcast, not a podcast podcast. This is not a street. Well, this is a streaming podcast, but we're not here to talk about streaming. We're here to talk about games and gaming. So we had recently a couple of things that go on. Uh, one of them is that Jeff Keeley with one of his mini productions that he does throughout the year uh, leading up to his game awards near the end of the year is that he got some people together for Gamescom. Now, Gamescom isn't his. He was doing a pre-show before Gamescom. Gamescom happens in, I believe, Champagne, Germany. Or no, Champagne. No, I can't it's, believe I did that. Cologne. <laughs> Cologne. Yeah, I was it's say, Cologne, Jeremy. France. And, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Champagne's definitely France. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Gamescom happens in Cologne, Germany. And so Jeff Keighley had a pre show. And during his pre show, he went over 30 games that were going to be talked about during Gamescom. Some of them new announcements, some of a lot of them we already knew about. And I wanted to talk about two of them. Okay, because we are a gaming podcast, mm-hmm. and we, we, what? we, we got to get some games what? in here. I mean, already, games. You, you missed we all that. Talked about Ferris Bueller already. I skipped over some other thing. Uh, I thought we were just a streaming. podcast. I don't know. 
Bruce Willis got the cut. I know. I and, uh, I, and I cut the other other thing. Maybe we'll, if there's time at the yeah. end, maybe we'll talk about next that. time. Yeah, maybe. We talk about games though. Weird. So first off, one of bit. the most exciting of the ones that I saw, and, and this was something that was known to be happening. Mm. But one of the most exciting ones that I saw was Saints Row. Saints Row. That's an old back. game. It is an mm. old game. It absolutely is. Now, Saints Row. That's not the last time we talk about old games on this podcast tonight. By that's the way. true. Well, it's, it's it's true. So before you start, I don't want to because this is like unrelated. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to drink again. Let me just yes. copy and paste. <laughs> Mike interrupts someone. Let me intro. let me let me Kanye you for a second. Okay. Yeah, again. Kanye, so I away. didn't know oh, that okay. there was a, a new one. Saints Row game. But when I logged in my PC, I rebooted it the other day because like updates or whatever. And like a little like the Epic store pops up and it's like pre-order now Saints Row. And I was like, what? <laughs> and yeah. then the next one pops up Saints Row 3, like something edition is now on sale. And I'm like, OK, I'm they confused. Did, they did a stealth free one. They did a stealth free one. Yeah, now. I'm like, I'm completely uh, confused right now. I don't understand what's going on. No, that, that was that was a perfect thing to throw in there. That wasn't a Kanye West. That was fine. Uh, Saints Row is coming back now. Now, again, old game. Yeah. And and primarily it did have some console ports, but primarily a PC game. So because of that, you start to limit the audience and a lot of people don't know as much about it. But Saints Row was very much a company's response to Grand Theft Auto, specifically Grand Theft Auto 3. Not the not the first couple Grand Thefts autos that were top down as <laughs> the modern version, as it were. Right. Right. And Saints Row one was like just a clone of it. And it did all mm-hmm. right. It had some funny little things because they, they very much were a fictional world and they were taking real world and making real world analogies like instead of Wendy's, it was freckle bitches. Nice. And so they had a couple of things like that and it was okay. And then Saints Row 2, they started to loosen up and started to do some jokes, but still was kind of clone of Grand Theft Auto. And then Saints Row 3 hit and they just went batshit insane overboard. Yep. And it was a hit. Like people loved it. They're like, there's this gang. It's it's not just like a gang. It's like becoming this like media empire and this political empire. And like and it's like taking over the city. It was and, like and, Fortnite and, meets Grand Theft Auto. Yes, very much it, so. Like uh, the way but, the game played but long, but long before Fortnite existed. Right. If anything, Fortnite kind of cribbed some of their stuff off of St. Road. Yeah. And they they just turned up the purple to 11. Yeah. They turned definitely. up the humor. To, yeah, they definitely turned up definitely the purple. to eleven. Oh my god! Oh, the purple uh, in that game. That's kind they, of what drove they, me away from that game. There's just so much purple. I was like, "What is this game? Right. Like, I can't." Which now I'm all purple. So yeah. Well, and then and then they turned up the humor. Like it yeah. was fantastic. And they and it wasn't just like they did funny jokes. They literally were riffing on other games. They were they were almost like the parody movie of other games. And and they did it quite well. So a lot of people enjoyed it. They did, uh, you know, a DLC expansion, Gat out of hell, because Gat was a Johnny Gat was a very popular character. Uh, they went to Saints Row four and Saints Row four went off the chart. Like people thought Saints Row 3 went overboard. Saints Row 4 went off the charts. So off the charts, spoiler alert here, uh. that the entire planet gets destroyed. And you are playing in a virtual reality construct that the aliens created of the entire planet. So because of that, your hacker friends, because you all like you and your group of Saints Row buddies kind of like uh, get away on, on a, an alien spaceship and they hack in and they give you superpowers. So during Saints Row four, you can jump super high. You can fly. You can run faster than the cars. Oh, cool. Like it's 
it's super over the top and it ends with like, Oh, because they were trying to like the aliens kept saying they could restore the earth and they, it yeah, basically ends like, ha ha. Well, <laughs> well, no, no, but that's exactly what it was because they said, well, we could restore the earth, but it's, it's not the real or it's virtual and you can go to any time that you want. And then there was this whole concept that they might start doing time travel after that. But literally, where do you go when you ratchet it up and ratchet it up and you just go super over the top like that? Well, you don't you don't continue that. You reboot it. What you yeah. do is reboot. and the reboot that they showed and they showed, uh, yeah, I mean, cinematic cut scenes. Mm. Sure. I mean, yes. Uh, but it just looks so fantastic and it's not purple turned up to 11, like saints row three. Yeah. It's the start. Uh, it's like, it's like the saints row gang starting off from scratch. That's the whole concept here. Mm -hmm. He's like, Oh, it's like a kind of a criminal empire startup thing, you know, and they like stealing this stuff from a, a, a gang that already exists. In fact, there's cert shirts say the Panteros have been around since 1983. Uh, <laughs> the guy's shirt. And it's cool because it's still like crazy over the top crime, you know, fun, you know, gang fun driving and GTA type stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, Saints Row is built on, but like flipping the motorcycle and jumping into the convertible type thing. And a again, a cutscene, not gameplay. This is not gameplay, but coming in hot with the <laughs> with the graphics that we have today i could see a lot of the gameplay looking very similar to this yeah and it sure. just looks super fun yeah i mean that's the now, thing is it looks a lot like mm -hmm. the grand theft auto gameplay like the style of gameplay like it's yeah you know go around the city do what you want Which or just, yeah, do whatever yeah and that's literally it and what's different about this to me is I was never, I actually played Saints Row 3. I just didn't get into it. Like, it was just too purple, like you said, for me. That's one of the main things why, which at the time, I guess, didn't matter to me. Or it did matter to me. Um, but looking oh, at Grand Theft Auto, so much fun. Like, look like at Grand Theft Auto's series, right? So, Grand Theft Auto, like you said, was top down. Uh, two was top down. And then they moved to three when they got to PlayStation. Uh, was it one or two? Two. 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 PlayStation two. two. God, I can't remember now. It's been so long. <laughs> Um, oh, so they finally got to days. GTA three. It was all 3d graphics. And it's like, you're actually following a third person and right. we're up to like five. Now we're up to, you know, going into potentially six or whatever. And it's the same style game, just new level, new map creation. Whereas well, this, I mean, they've they kind did of some cool things on five yeah. where they, where you were like popped out and you pop back into a different protagonist. You had three different protagonists. Right, right. And, right. and, and you didn't, pop back into them like where you left them. It's like they continued living their yeah. life since you left them, which is really cool. I'm but, curious to what Saints Row, the reboot's going to bring. Go ahead. Well, just saying like on that sense, exactly. Like what is Saints Row, the newest one going to be like? Because they've had time to look at Grand Theft Auto and see what has worked. They've seen what mm -hmm. people complain about. They see how much money they make <laughs> like because it's obvious like it's just like a Skyrim it's it's a game that has come out on multiple consoles I, I bought Grand Theft Auto 5 on Xbox 360 I think it was initially and then now what Mike had a console I did back in the day I actually had consoles it's it's a weird pepper far pepperage farms members but like one of those um but yeah like I bought that on 360 and then now here we are in like the Xbox Series yeah. X world like it's or even PlayStation five world. And they, they still making it like, well, I don't my toaster. We're not going to know all of the answers, but here's the interesting thing. We actually don't have to wait as long as we thought, because first off, they're going to be showing a gameplay trailer, actual gameplay <gasps> yeah. at where, where, where? No, it's not going to be there. Uh, it's actually going to be bum, before bum, bum, there. Bum. <laughs> they're not going to be at PAX West. More on that in the future. Uh, in about three and a half days. So right around the first, pretty much they are going to release a gameplay trailer of this game. Mm. Now that's still not going to answer the questions of, you know, where are they going to go? That's going to differentiate them from grand theft auto five, uh, 
besides, of course, their humor that they're known for. But I think we're going to find out more then. Also, we also don't have to wait too long for the release because oh, the release is slated for February 22nd, 2022. Damn, that's it's pretty close. Six months oh. away. God, I am so I think it because I, I'm I'm so over 2023. I'm like, really, man? <laughs> like, what I'm what I'm freaking it's out. It's nice about. to have uh, something releasing somewhat yeah. soon. Well, what I'm freaking about right now is I'm like, yeah, like that's about the time the mm. Boulder's Gate is going to come out. Mm. And I'm like, wait, that was last year, right? Yeah. Like, isn't Boulder's Gate like last year? <laughs> Wasn't Dude, that the time so that you get to like stuff. do like <laughs> Like, where's this well, year gone? Also, yes. Uh, also, thank goodness we're already on the second that half. we finally live in the day and age <laughs> that not all the games come out just between fall and Christmas. Yeah. You know, because that was the thing. Madden came out and Madden Madden was like the groundhog yeah. of the games world that Madden yeah. came out. And, then, and you're like, oh, my God, finally, games are back because you like they wouldn't release games mm. during the summer because mm -hmm. people were outside playing in the summer. Well, uh, the game industry is big enough right now. You can release something in the summer. It's just fine. Yeah. And plenty of people do well, it. Well, Madden is like a Thanksgiving thing. Like they want to make sure it's out for before Thanksgiving because yeah. that's when all families right. get together and people mm -hmm. want to play. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. my cousins yeah. want to like football season. Throw it. So. Well, yeah. And it's football. You want to throw the football. Like you want to be able to just it's get a like football game. You're going to release. Yeah. Your I team mean, sucks. Well, everybody. I'm going to beat you in a video, a virtual game. Cause like I'm better. Like that's just how but, it was. Like but the point is, is that ball. Sports not ball. just Madden, all the games yeah. released between Madden and Christmas. So you know, like yeah. having games release in like January and February is so refreshing. Yeah. yeah. And that's like and that's like the the triple A studios, I guess you're talking about, because even now like, and it is still a new now world. But like all these like new indie companies, like putting out games at any point of the time, all these early access games that just show up out of nowhere. Like you go to Steam's front page and you're like. I never even heard of this game. Like, there's a new AAA yeah. game today. I, I'm not even gonna say the name because I'm not gonna plug them yet because I don't know if it's good. <laughs> but I saw this and I was like, "Wow, okay, this game looks really cool. This is like right up Zeisia's alley. Like, like how much wood can I get from this game? Like, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> and like, they're like, "Oh, the game is released in like uh, I think it's like three months from now. The game's released. It's not early access, but right now, if you pre-order it, you're gonna get beta." And you're going to get you're going to get uh, like four different beta maps. You're going to do to like get these different uh, biomes and then it's going to get released. And I'm like, that sounds like beta. It sounds like early access. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah. it looks great. I'm like, but where did this game come from? It came out of nowhere. I like, just, just <laughs> there it is on Steam front page. Here it is. I know, end of August. So like whatever. So speaking of games that came out of nowhere, this game. Was leaked. Just in June, beginning of June. Someone leaked out and said, we think Firaxis, the makers of XCOM, term-based strategy game, we think Firaxis is making a superhero XCOM type game. And within days, um, uh, not Jeff Keighley, the, the uh, guy from Bloomberg. Oh, uh, uh, it's Jason... Uh... Jason Schreier. Schreier, yeah. Yeah, Jason Schreier from Bloomberg said, confirm. Wow. Yep. And then that was all we knew. And then during Gamescom, it was actually a couple of days before Gamescom that more details leaked out. But just a couple of days ago during Jeff Keighley's Gamescom like reveal thing, they revealed Midnight Suns. Now, Midnight Suns is this interesting storyline within the Marvel universe. Uh, it was a set of comics uh, that were all tied together and it was Marvel superheroes dealing with supernatural problems. And they had, this is 93 to 94, if I recall correctly from uh, what I looked up and it had a number of heroes in it. And like anything Marvel, when they decide mm -hmm. to you know, redo stuff like when they redid Civil, Civil War, they changed some things on it for the, you know, the movies. So Midnight Suns is still supernatural there. It's going to be a turn based strategy game, very similar to XCOM. You are going to have 
very familiar heroes in it. There's going to be Iron Man. You're going to have Wolverine. You're going to have Captain America. Uh, Magic is in there. Doctor Strange, Ghost Rider, Blade. Nice. And what's even cooler is they're all kind of got this supernatural twist on them. So their armor literally has root is like they have this golden armor and there's runes etched into the lot of their armor. Uh, even Iron Man has like these runes etched into it and they're all going to be fighting Lilith. Oh, the she mother of not demons. Happy. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, this, this is going to be one of the few times. Uh, and pretty much the, there's that beautiful runed armor mm. there that Wolverine's got. This is going to be one of the few times where. You get to create your own superhero. Hey, man, I'm already in. And your superhero there is called Hunter. It's male or female. You get to create your superhero that's fighting alongside of all these superheroes that you know, and some maybe that you don't know. And you get to choose your superhero's powers that nice. then grow. There's 40 different superhero powers that you get to grow and add on like you're not going to get all 40 at the end but mm -hmm. you get 40 to choose from uh and as you grow you get to add in extras and change them and evolve them and play alongside and command basically the rest of the pantheon of the marvel universe really it looks fantastic again that's all cinematic we don't know what gameplay is going to look yeah. like uh, but I mean, it is for Firaxis. We know what XCOM looks like, so we can imagine a little bit there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to be that three quarter isometric perspective. Probably um, you're going to be able to zoom in. I'm sure. You just like come out of left this, field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The cinematics look like they're going to be fantastic. Uh, the story should be really interesting and intriguing uh, based on the fact that uh, I mean, just if you go and watch the trailer, it pretty much opens with Dr. Strange trying to wake you, the hunter up huh. and he can't do it. He isn't powerful enough. So the ghost writer comes in and adds his supernatural power and magic comes in and she adds her power. It, it like yeah, and he, that trailer started. I was like, is that ghost? Rider? Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't see Nicholas cage anymore. Like what? And Blade looks bad. Blade looks just ass. like Wesley Snipes. I'm sorry. Like yeah. that is like that is him forever. Like Ghost Rider is like, oh, it's just a skeleton. Yeah. We'll just make him like whoever. But the like, Blade, it's like Blade that's, will always be Wesley Snipes. That is, that is his character. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, enough, so I would love to see some gameplay on this, uh, hopefully somewhat soon. Also, don't have to wait super long. It's going to be released in March nice. of 2022. Wow. So it's about seven months before this is released. So I know my February and my March are going to be busy. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to look forward to those being uh, some type of game of the moment. Nice. Yeah, we should do that. Make sure we, we get to watch it with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I, I we've mean, said a lot. I mean, the best... The best game of moment would be to have someone else run the game. Yeah, well, we've said a lot. We've talked about some cons. And some pros and pros. <laughs> but the con that we're talking about now is PAX West. So you're going next week. Tell us a little bit about what's happening. Absolutely. Uh, so it's going to be its regular schedule, which is that everyone shows up Thursday. Uh, hopefully there will be a board game night. Uh, as is typical, but uh, it's smaller, so there might not be. Uh, but the convention itself runs Friday, Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. till midnight every day. Uh, and then Monday, it runs 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. And. It was interesting because uh, there were concerns about 
uh, you know, like the health and safety. Yeah. Uh, there was concerns about like, you know, what's going to be going on. And they came back and they said, oh, okay, well, you know, we're going to want everybody either vaccinated or proof of, you know, no COVID. You're going to wear masks while you're coming in there. And like, okay, that's good. They're going to reduce the number of people that can attend. So that makes sense as well. Absolutely. But what I wasn't seeing was any kind of information about the convention. There was lots of information about the, you know, health and safety, Mm -hmm. but there was not a lot of information about the convention because typically they have their show schedule and information out on an app that you can peruse through like a month at least before the convention. The schedule just dropped that's, one week before the convention. And that's pretty crazy because they they're usually one, one of the ones that like do that a lot earlier, I would say. One week. Yeah, that's that's pretty wild. And looking at the expo floor or basically the companies that are coming to be on the expo floor and bring their, mer- you know, bring what they're working on, what's new. Um, I can see why maybe they waited till one week. Because it is a desert. Yeah. There is no Nintendo, no Sony, no mm-hmm. Microsoft, no Bethesda. Yes, I know that's Microsoft. There's no Activision Blizzard. There's no EA. None. Zero of the big boys. I think the biggest name that I see in here is Bandai Namco. Um, it's pretty bad that when I'm randomly looking at this, I'm seeing things like R&D Hobby and Games. New Belgium Brewing Company. Wow. See, should have come. Hey, you should have come. Yeah. Now New you got Belgium Brewing Company. Uh, DigiPen Institute of Technology. Uh, yeah. OK. Gamer Mats. Uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> gamer mats. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, no, uh, uh, and yeah, there's some, there's some, Brian just I mean, showed a gamer mat, by the way, uh, for those. Yes. Listening. Thank you yes. for those listening. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't happen pull to have one down. right here. It was, <laughs> I was like gamer mat. Who wants to play? No. It wasn't that. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's some game companies here. 18, 1985 games, Akron games. I've heard of them. Uh, 562 Interactive, Crystal Castle, Rundown Revolts, Chris Lab, Pink Gorilla LLC, Poorly Timed Games. And I'm just randomly picking stuff here. Tentworks Interactive. So like I'm going through this and like there's a lot of indies here. Some I've heard of Lone Shark Games. Absolutely. I've I've met Mike from Lone Shark Games. I've talked Mike, to him. I'm not there. What are you talking about? <laughs> there uh, are fact, there's more than one mic that's a weird thing uh, I, it's box. weird it's weird it's weird there's no other ones otter otter box otter box is gonna be there uh so unstable games hooded horse so so there's some indies there that's for sure uh aether studios i've heard of but it is not going to be what is thought of as the modern packs. If anything, this is going to be very much similar to some of the beginning packs where you know, so the beginning packs were very small. Uh, I mean, you know, and they they could bring in a lot of the big game, big names. Uh, I think the big names are staying out because of the health concerns. Yeah, yeah. certainly. I mean, make, I do think sense. this is a lot a, of people yeah. are going to stay out because of that, too. So a lot of yeah. stuff. Uh, I completely yeah. agree. I honestly think that this is going to be a, you know, a temporary thing. This is not going to be something that is going to be permanent. Uh, looking at the panels, I mean, Jackbox is there. They're doing the Jackbox party pack uh, acquisitions incorporated, which is their D and D thing. Uh, I saw something in there for that. Um, so I think that panel wise, it's going to be a little bit more normal. Not a hundred percent normal. There's I already know of some of the there's some of the people that normally come that I know are not there. 
Uh, I know Giant Bomb is not going. Um, I don't think Pat Bear's there. He does. He does several panels usually. Yeah. Um, hey, you can't he, do he, that. He, Stop doing that. Windows. We can says, hear sorry. that. Windows says yes. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Uh, he usually does some pretty good panels like the um, the uh, improv pitch panel, which he brings up these different people that he knows that are his friends that he thinks are kind of funny. And they are kind of funny. They actually are very funny. And he says, OK, you're going to pitch the game. Purple emblems or something, you know, and they, and they have to like or or, you know, or. You know dead horse racing and they like have jackbox to, like the sell your product or whatever is kind dead of, horse it racing. kind of is and they all of a sudden have to go into this game and they're doing the post-mortem like what i went would wrong play and what dead good. horse racing based on the name yeah, uh for sure. so i don't see him there i don't see the uh the wrestling federation there they don't i don't see any of the wrestling panels um, but they, the rest, the wrestling panels are so good. So, but they're still doing online. Like they're going to do a discord. They're still going to do the online content. Yes. But also we did hear recently that Australia PAX is canceled, okay. which mm -hmm. last year the, they combined Australia PAX with PAX West and made a PAX online. So that Australia PAX is canceled. We may see another event spawn potentially outside of just PAX West. My understanding is that PAX online will or PAX Australia will be online. Yeah. From my understanding. And I mean, makes sense that PAX Oz got canceled. They, as a country, tend to have stricter regulations on this. Yeah. Um, they, as a country, have lower yeah. cases. Yes. Per yes, capita. they do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This. I mean, it's hard to get. I would say New Zealand, but like hard to get hobbits to like catch. You know. <laughs> First of all, Australia and New Zealand are. Very I different. know, but it's and they would. The they would. You would have a fight on your oh my hands, gosh, my friend. I, I, I know. I, I, I'm sure people I'm are fighting right now you. listening. It's like, what? I am not sticking <laughs> up for you. Uh, uh, no, on this set. Nope, 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 nope. It's a joke. But you as the listener, if you happen oh. to be from New Zealand or Australia, and if you want to tell us about how bad the other person is, please send yeah. it in to GOA at sasgaming.com. Sas yeah, tell me how bad I am. read your beef for saying that. on air. I've heard it so many times. Like, um, oh, you're Puerto Rican. You're just like Mexican. Might, or, hey, you're Mexican. You're just like Puerto Rican or Cuban. Or It's like. <sighs> we might even have you on the show. Right? If sure. you subscribe to Patreon, we sure. might do that. <laughs> we'll interview you. I'll interview about you and your cat. And mm -hmm. that's fine. Or quality, hey. I guess. Oh, my God. Game on. <laughs> Mofo's like, oh. Wish I had a koala. That'd be cool. You say that as I suddenly clicked on cat theater. Uh, oh, so Do it. it does oh, look please, like they're going to have the panels. Uh, I, my, I, when me and my wife went to, I think our first or second packs might've been the second one. We did almost entirely panels and just, we almost never touched the expo floor. Yeah. We Same thing with us in dragon con. It's hard. Like the, do the only panel thing. Like we did that when she was pregnant. Cause it was like, obviously she's not going to hang out and drink. <laughs> <laughs> so mm, we yeah. did a lot of panels that year. And it was great, but man, it's not like I like being able to to do both, like the mixture, the hybrid. Yeah. Well, and it was nice because we got to see so many things that we'd never saw before. We stepped into this panel that was a group cooperative horror role playing game. That sounds awesome. That you add anything else? It, it was. That? It was. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was it was crowd participation Some and it was so fun. Mm. They tried to turn off the lights. Crowd lights couldn't be turned off. The, three times as many people <laughs> as they could fit into the panel actually showed up crowd and they actually they actually went yep. and got more chairs so that they could bring more people in. And the authors, the authors of this book were like. We're overwhelmed. We were not expecting this many people to show up for our little book thing that we've created, like that has been out for like two or three years or, or whatever. But thank you. And it was it was so amazing. And yeah, I mean, we was, also were in the audience for the. Um, the announcement of Hearthstone, the worldwide announcement of Blizzard 
announcing Hearthstone. We were there in the panel. And it wasn't even like a major theater. I mean, it was just a panel room that held like maybe 500 people. And I was live tweeting that when that happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's cool to always go. And if you have any any um, any time that you can go to a con, a convention and no matter how small or big it may be, like even if you haven't heard of it, if it's like local, just go check it out. Like one of the biggest mm-hmm. things that me and my wife love to do at conventions, and usually it's the smaller ones that we get to go to, but like, whoa, 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 it's PG rated. But we love to just check out PG the rated, vendors. no butts. We just like to check out the vendors, like the <laughs> vendors that are there. Yes. Like, especially if they're not like the commercial vendors where they sell all the same stuff that everybody else has. Like the ones that are like artists that have like either their art or, you know, even with Demurin, like his wife does all the art, right? Like she has mm-hmm. her own thing. Like, Going there to see people like that at Dragon Con to me is like one of the best parts about going because it's stuff that you're not going to find anywhere. You're going to go yeah. there. You're going to see this cool art. You're able to buy and talk to the artist that mm. makes this stuff. Yep. And mm-hmm. that is really Copies to me stuff. is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to so. just be there and like there's something about. Seeing people in person like that is not something that's replaceable over after this last year yeah. i feel you i'm like man yeah. i just want to see some people so, guy you just get some people well I, that's one of the reasons why i'm going <laughs> yeah. is it to, to me pax isn't about the explo floor yeah. pax is about a group of gamers coming together mm. some of them are developers yeah some of them are you know some of them are like people that just make wooden things like which you've seen at Dragon Con, uh, there's some of those people also go to PAX. There's at least two of them that I've seen Dragon Con that go to PAX as well. Chessex uh, goes yeah. to both. Um, yeah, it's cool. Some, just to some, see the some of them are like... attendees. Some of them are celebrities, but they all go there because yeah. they love gaming. Yeah. Of all different types, console, PC, handheld, tabletop, doesn't matter. D&D, whatever. And they go there and they just it's just to go there and hang out and meet people like minded people. Yeah, it's like. This is funny. It's like a real life discord. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. I, I say it's funny because we, nice we all watch. Is this that. another segue? The, uh, yes, it is. We watch the uh, discord. Um, uh, commercial last well, we'll night. We'll talk about it right now. <laughs> I mean, I Before say, you, wait, hold on, hold on. I one say last like thing. I don't know, but yeah. yeah you know. One of, I was just looking at one of the exhibitors. One of the exhibitors is D and T. D ampersand T E A. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to find that's out. Awesome. I, I will, I will take pictures of that booth and I will give it to our social media manager. Yes. Give me something so, more to do. <laughs> Discord recently, and this will be pretty quick because there's not a whole lot to talk about this, but Discord basically came out recently and announced that they were trying to find someone to buy them, basically, like did some valuation in the company. And there was talks with Microsoft. Uh, There was like people heard wind that Microsoft was going to buy them. They were just going to consume them. And then all of a sudden they come out the the hole of like this massive buyout and all of a sudden like Discord's like, yeah, no, we're still here. We're not, we're not Microsoft. Yeah. We're not, what are you talking about? We're not going to Microsoft. And uh, the deal fell through and we were like, what? Like Microsoft? Like that's Microsoft. Like what are you Jeez. thinking? You know? And they were like, no, the I think the only thing worse we could do is go yeah. to Google. Yeah, we were like, no, but we think our company's worth more, you know, as it was evaluated at that time, like eight billion dollars or something like that. It's just crazy already. No, but already crazy. So so then uh, there were some talks that, you know, they were going to potentially have some. So there was talk, actually some talks came out and there was actually an agreement that came out mm-hmm. with my, uh, PlayStation. So PlayStation came out and said they were going to have like a some kind of partnership with Discord. Not like they bought them, but they're just going to work with par- uh, PlayStation on Whatever they're going to do. We don't know because it still hasn't really been announced yet. But then over the past week, uh, they came out and said that they're going to evaluate their company at 15 billion dollars, which is go big or go home. Almost double what the evaluation of their company was initially. Um, So they're not going they're not going IPO. They're not actually going to the stock market. I'm not trying to say like, hey, we're evaluated this, but we're going to just do that. 
they're trying to find someone, an investor, a company that's going to buy them so they can just leave, basically be yeah. just be done with it. Right. Um, so that happened. They actually put out a commercial, which is a five minute commercial, which was a movie. It's called Discord, the movie. And they hired 2021, 2021. And they hired Danny DeVito along with a bunch of a bunch of like, obviously, artists and developers, because like I love this it. commercial. I say in air quotes is five minutes long of like a movie. Yeah. And, it's and that, that's what they call it. Discord the movie. They call yeah. it Discord the movie. It's it's got all the CGI, all of the explosions, all of the, the twists. Uh, and it's Danny DeVito is like Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. So confused. Yeah. And he's like so confused, which is he perfect. Was doing like a if you're right, you know, like was, if you're any yeah. any uh, any uh, fan of like sunny in philadelphia any, uh whatever yeah. like it's he's, always sunny in philadelphia it's, it's always sunny in philadelphia like, this is like danny devito in prime it's great um but I yeah i was super confused why discord made a Fortnite commercial yeah it was basically a Fortnite commercial but uh, it's it's well, really okay, well it's really like I ready player one the ready oasis one. like the oasis like they tried to sell this mm-hmm. as a place where you can join and you can literally do anything, anything. that you want and you can be anybody you want to be and if you want to go join a specific group you can do that if you want to join a large group and be a part of like the whole you can do that too along with video calling messaging and all this other stuff which if you're a you know listening to us most likely you're either a part of our discord if you're not check our links do that um because we're a community as well like we use discord in that sense but so they put out this video and they do all of this stuff and they're like hey we're worth double we're we're Mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna just push all our chips in. We're, we're, we're double at this point. And they've said that they have multiple talks with a bunch of different companies. Uh, they said Microsoft, they said, um, they said Microsoft, Sony, they have uh, X, uh, Microsoft, uh, sorry, Microsoft, Xbox. They said Amazon. Um, they had like Sony and all those different things. And, and they rejected a $12 billion offer from Microsoft. So it was actually higher mm. than what I said initially. Um, but with that, all of a sudden, this is Bloomberg reporting. So this is like hot off the press. Um, but as of August 24th, so earlier this week, um, they came out and said that there's a investment group called Dragoneer, uh, Dragoneer investment group is apparently expected to lead the investment that would value the popular company at around 15 billion. Um, so that's pretty much all we know about that. But the point is like, it's not even a large company that's willing to spend the money on them. There, there's an investment group out there that goes, Hey, yeah, they're worth 15 million. Yeah, for sure. Billion. Let's go for 15, 15 billion. Yeah, let's go. Cause I mean, realistically, cause we were talking about this I last would night buy him for 15 million. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this last night. It was kind of funny cause we were kind of looking at reviewing the yeah. things we're going to talk about today and, and we talked about this topic and it was it was very interesting. I don't want to get into the whole conversation we had last night because like that's, that should be a separate podcast at this point. But yeah, it was um, it is it's it's a large platform that does a lot of things. And before Discord, there wasn't really a large company like this outside of mm-hmm. or a large software company like this outside of like TeamSpeak yeah. for people to use an online platform. And I say gaming world because that's where Discord initially was was gaming. Right. Once COVID happened, it was like, hey, we're everyone. for everyone. And it, it yeah. made a difference. And, uh, it was genius. It was it, uh, right. it, it was amazing. So so initially, TeamSpeak was the only place you could go and you'd pay for a server, which would be the same same kind of layout. You have different rooms and you join channels and you can talk to people. And but it was a paid service like the owner had to pay for it. And if they didn't want to charge anybody, great. But if they did, whatever. And people could join in and out. And then now then you had like you know, on the other side, like the video calling you had Skype. You had like all these different companies that were doing like voice calls, like Zoom and all this stuff coming out later. It's and our eventually, preferred form of communication. Yeah. For just mm-hmm. it's specifically the podcast, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, That's yeah. Cool. And we use Discord. So trust me, like, and yeah, and yeah we're spoilers. We're telling you we use Discord. Obviously, yeah. we use Discord. And yeah, you know that. The you thing is, is like, Come on. there's <laughs> other companies that other software companies <clears throat> we've tried and nothing really works for what we need, at least in, in our yeah. sense, for what we need better than Discord. Like they just for everything, everything's here. Mm-hmm. Like we can do video, we can do audio, we can do like just all this, you know, community sense. Like it's just great. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, very interesting that there I mean, isn't a, a, a well, go ahead. To be clear, there are some things that I wish Discord did a lot better. Yes, for but sure. But 
considering the fact that we don't pay much for discord yeah. um, and cause discord runs off a subscription service. Mm-hmm. We do. If, if I do. boost it. So yeah. I pay us. I, <laughs> but I'm just saying it's, it. it's free. You can just use discord for free. You don't yes. have to pay yeah. for anything. Yeah. But for our, you can join our have... discord for free. You can join yes. ours. But our use of Discord, Mine's not, we pay yeah, for yes. very specifically so that we can get the <laughs> higher res video and everything like that. There's a reason why we do it. Um, uh, it, it and that's how they work. They work on subscription services. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about subscription services is that companies that want to invest love that. Yeah. Yeah. Because s- subscription services tend to weather economic downturns better mm-hmm. people it's that residual people, some, residual even, income. even even if even if it's easy to cancel a subscription a lot of people don't think about a subscription the same way so a lot of people forget yeah. about yep. subscriptions so it's, it's i've got like one of those right now that i'm thinking going. about like man i should have canceled that last month i forgot i've got i just of canceled I three cancel. i li- yeah. i literally this just literally happened to me yeah i had to do yeah that. and last like, week is when i canceled that blizzard one for a while so <laughs> it's funny you but, mentioned that one specifically because that is a thing to talk about but um, the other thing we mentioned last oh, night, which I do want to touch on now before we wrap this up before the, the, the break, but the other part of discord that's really neat is they embrace developers. Mm-hmm. So if you are a developer that has yes. some sort of like web calls or any sort of like API calls or any sort of like web hooks or whatever, whatever you want to do and want to build mm-hmm. a bot, like they allow you to do that. There is a developer website for discord that you can make a bot. And you can it give you everything you need to have and you can just create that stuff. And it's great. Mm-hmm. Like you can literally like, so like we talked about packs, right? So packs last year online was really great because one of the things they did was they had a discord that was like this one channel. I can't remember what it was, but it was like a D and D game. Was, like it was the role playing channel. It was the role playing yeah. channel. It was a D and D game. And it says like type in slash this to like start the game and you'd start the game. And it was like, you're going down a dark alley, blah, 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 blah. Like and you rolled the dice and then you would get certain outcomes of this game. And if mm-hmm. you won, you got certain things that would attach those immediately to your member of the discord channel. Emojis. So you would have like, little emojis of like this, yeah. like this channel would have like your user. And then it yeah. would say like, you're the, the harbinger. Like you would know that that's the person who's did, you know, X like doing the game. And you're like, yep. Oh wow, that person's in and here. And there were different outcomes. So yeah. there were different, there was reasons to go back yeah. and do it over right. again. And all of this, it was all text based yep. and all interactive and all, you know, reacting to what you typed into a specific channel. And it was just. Yeah. So there's it was entertaining. There's all sorts of bots like there's I have a friend group that we we follow stocks. We have talked about that before. Like there's a stock bot. I can literally type in a command and say like, oh, God, we got to go to break now. I know. Jeez. We're so like, like so hey, going to talk about this. Oh, for my 15 God. Hours. No, yes. no, I'm not. I'm just saying, oh like, God. there's one that quick, I can do that. Quick, type in a quick. thing. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're an asshole. The stock bot. I know. Stock bot. So there is. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting back. I'm getting you back for some other things. This so is cool. <laughs> literally type in a thing and it tells you about the stock. Then I have another bot yeah. on another channel that talks about music. Like we, we have it join, which we'll talk about later. It joins our channel and plays like music. Like yeah. we have one that's like really our SAS. Loud. We have actually have a SAS oh my economy. Goodness, you got to turn it down. Mm. And like SAS economy. Uh, right. So if you join our discord, yeah. there's a SAS economy where you go and you work. And when you type work, it like gives you coins and we have like uh, SAS coins that you can of, like I do. Totally yeah, exactly. The see, there. so there's all these things that like these web hooks and stuff by can work, do. You just type something yeah. in that you're working. So there's all these different web hooks Every and different hour. API calls that you can do. But 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 the point is, Discord allows you to do that. They allow you mm-hmm. to customize the like the, the platform, the community that you're building. They allow you to do that. Yes. And and yeah. that is, I think, the reason soon. why they say their evaluation is like double what they were actually evaluated at. And I think I think it's going to be easy. Like, there's not a lot of companies that can do that. that can say, like, we're worth double. And then a big company like Google is going to be like, all right, like <laughs> that's not a that's not a normal thing. But I think they have yeah. the product to do that. And I think they know that. And I think mm. they know they're going to the company's going to get double whatever they put into it immediately. So they're like, let's just let us get the money off the front 
because we'll just go ahead and get paid now and then you guys can make more money later because yeah. it's going to it's going to grow from there. So that's uh, that's basically that. So any last comments on that? If not, we'll move to the break. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. And and I would like to see how they're actually going to make Discord better because it does well, they have, they have some stuff to improve on. I mean, <laughs> all right. So Discord about eggs, man. Listen to a word from our sponsor or sponsors, and we're going to go get some drinks and we're going to come back and we're going to tell you about some cool news. Hang out. Like if you if you yeah. usually drop at this point, I don't blame you. But if you do, <laughs> if you want to hang out, hang out for a little bit. It hang won't out. take much longer. Yeah. So. And uh, on that note, we'll be back. So the stream from my bed uh, will be announced later. Um, we'll figure it out, though. Oh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> I usually lead this off with <laughs> and we're back, but apparently we're going to be streaming from Day Drinker's bedroom, so you should tune in for that. <laughs> wait, wait. Do you want me to back up and oh play the break God. music again? <laughs> I think we're good. Oh, we're fantastic. So we have we have content we're, in we're between this. Like, if you're listening to the podcast, we have content in between this on the live stream. You may want right. to be a part of that. <laughs> Apparently, I like yeah. to mess with Mike. <laughs> we all like to mess with Mike. Oh, God. Oh, well, I Seriously. mean, I stayed around. I messed with both of you as you came back. So it was yes. quite funny. So uh, yes, what yes. we've been playing this week. Yes. So. <sighs> so game of the moment this it, week was 12 minutes. We talked about this last week that we were going to start playing it. It was great. And it was hard to like really talk about the game because. It's just it's so hard to not spoil it with anybody, mm. um, but we did put out a video. Oh. Um, Boy, was there are spoilers. So in the video that we went out. So yeah. in fact, there were spoilers enough that Mike was able to progress his game. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, we're yes. not going to cover this very much because I'm telling you right now, right. we're not because there's too many spoilers. We had a great time. Well, yeah. There's a video of us playing the got our, our sorry, our game of the moment stream on Tuesday of this past week. Uh, playing 12 minutes and I will say if you are somewhat stuck at the beginning of the game mm. this may help you just pause the video yes. or maybe just like turn it off if you get too far um, take a little bit of that that you get and kind of go forward but what I did was I basically said we're playing it I'm going to be like the person clicking the buttons and you guys decide on what we need to do because I had already played it for a little bit so I reset my character back to the beginning and just said like you know tell me what to do and even with that, the the so it was between Demurin and and Brian it was crowdsourced and uh, you guys kind of did different things that, than I did necessarily. Mm. Uh, there was a couple things that I kind of did on my own to kind of speed the things up. And actually, Day Drinker joined the chat, which was weird because like she couldn't make the stream, <laughs> but she made the chat. Guys. It was weird. Yeah. Um, but she like offered some other advice and we kind of played it together. Uh, it was a great stream for that sense. But it's a very great game. It's a it's a murder it uh, a spoiler. Uh, it's a murder mystery ah! type of game uh, in a sense, I guess you could say it's it's like yeah. that type of like well, it's, noir. It's, it's a I guess. it's yes. dramatic. It's yeah. it's a dramatic story driven adventure game yeah. Yeah. that but, has an interesting perspective of top down of the apartment yeah. that you and your wife live in. We should just pay this guy for like descriptions of games because like he just right? pulled that out of his butt. Like it was just also uh, I, fantastic. I, I, yes. uh, I do want to throw in there really quick. Uh, if you are interested in this game, please go listen to season two, episode 10, I believe last week, uh, where we talk about this because it is a very, for the most part, spoiler free discussion yeah. about yes. 12 minutes yes, yes. of which me being a person who has never played only it. heard of it, yeah. but never touched it or played it. I, I essentially interview both Kelly and Mike about 12 minutes to determine, OK, what what is this game? What are some of the th what's the gameplay like? What's the things going on? Um, and they uh, answer uh, quite well. So if you want to hear about 12 minutes, go back to last week. We'll wait right here for you. We'll be here for you when you come back. Hashtag have has it really been 10 episodes this? We're at 11. Season seven. This is 11. Oh and God. we're back. And we're back. 
So, I, I'm sorry. It, that, it so that, like, that is 12 minutes. That's all we're going to say about it. Go fine. check out the video. It's great. You know, don't worry, you Kelly. You, you, you great, get but. used to it. You don't get used to it. So I played a game actually right before going live tonight. I played a game, a new game called. <laughs> so I'm getting really close to making that new video that Kelly wants me to make, which is who's got the best wood too. I'm getting close to yes. that. I've, I've, I've yes. almost got enough Sorry. content that I'm, I'm ready for number two. Loves. That video. What he loves it, Mike. You just had a His break. If you needed, if you were ready for number two, you should have gone uh, during the break. Yeah, so I'm almost there, but I got a new game that I started playing. It's called The Survivalist, and imagine that Zeissy is playing a game called Survivalist. <laughs> weird. You like survival games? I know it's it's a weird thing. I don't oh, I don't really get into them that like much. I've never but met you. Like so, I just <laughs> so survivalist is a <laughs> almost like it, it's almost like if Stardew Valley met like a can't wait to this. I'm wait for this. I, I'm trying to think of a game like Stardew Valley meets like Don't Starve green hell or something where you're like building stuff like from the woods and you're just kind of living on your own. It's from not, as, it's not as, like, not as intense as green hell, but um, very much a survival game. It's very much 16 bit where it's like, you know, you and your friends, but you can play up to like 10 other players um, and you guys create your own like map and you kind of just live off the land and like you craft stuff and you keep crafting, crafting, crafting and the live trees are the large land. and like the trees Ooh, on how, land how are big? large how but big the, is the, the wood, crafting Mike? trees are Tell also us large. How big the wood so is. So the wood is a lot better than <laughs> like Stardew or because, better yeah, like you, you can drop down a tree really quick and it, you get a lot of wood. Anyway, the point is it's a really oh. cool game and it's very chill. Uh, so far, what I've okay. noticed wood. Uh, playing this for a few hours, what I've noticed is that there is. Um, only a certain cycle of days, like so many days go by, almost like Breath of the Wild, where there's like a blood moon and the blood moon rises again and like all the things. Link, the blood moon. Um, it's kind of like that, <laughs> but like the blood moon comes out and it says like the raid's happening and you'll be like, what? and it's like the raid's really coming this time. Get to shelter. And you're like, OK, you see like, this little no. pop up and you're like, OK. And then like the next thing you know, it's like, seriously, the raid is coming. And you're like, OK, where are they? And finally, they attack you. And then so they, you did like, they attack the wood. They attack you with wood, with their own. Oh wood. God! And they attack you with. Uh, I've yeah. been there. So I have been in your situation, <laughs> friend. I know. A, I. We should talk later. Yeah, they have Not spears and stuff. Part. It's crazy. So we finally defeat oh, them or die. And then, uh, and we basically come back to life, and we're just there again for the next three days. We're just hanging out. What's really interesting about this game, though? So I'm all about these survival games right but i'm mm. also very much about automation and a lot of survival games don't really have that satisfactory did we we enjoyed that because we got to build like all kinds of automated things and it was great so this game doesn't have automation like automated oh, conveyor belts or anything not there's no automated wood but what it does have <laughs> is monkeys <laughs> It has monkeys. So there are monkeys you can find in the wild. And when you get them, you can put them to work. So basically they become your sweatshop and you can give them <laughs> tools and they will carry out whatever thing you want them to do. So if you're crafting, you can say, hey, you are the crafter now. You craft everything. When you have the ability to do that, you craft it. So you just like dump the materials into a certain thing and he just crafts it. And it's all it does is over and over. He gets pissed off when you can't. <laughs> like craft stuff like it's so at the risk of getting banned you're telling us that <laughs> monkeys can give you wood monkeys yes. can give us wood they can give us whatever they want you want him to yes, dig a hole and get can. get mud he'll dig a hole and get mud for you doesn't care he's gonna dig a hole and put the wood in it he's gonna put whatever he wants in it <laughs> oh over and over again God. so over and over and very quickly so I really cool survival game so far i'm enjoying it i'll check it out and that is pretty much what I have to say about that. So, so, and that's what I, all I have to say about that is that that's is that your Forrest Gump. <laughs> all Tell us about, about your game day drinker. Tell yeah, us about what? what game you got? 
Tell us about your game, Day Drinker. Okay, so I um, randomly was thinking about this game that I used to play when I was a kid on my dad's computer called Lemmings. And it was a puzzle game, you know, uh, Lemmings, they fall off cliffs. Yeah, I, and, I loved that game as a kid. Yeah. It was so cool. Thank you. And so I randomly thinking about it. And as the universe does, when you randomly think about something, it shows up. So I was updating my apps on my iPhone and checking out the games and there's learnings and the 30th anniversary version. And so I started playing it. Um, if you are a mega fan of the old version. Yes. Hashtag don't play. Oh, like, oh no. Oh no. Oh, hashtag no. Does oh, not no. recommend. Yeah, oh, that sucks. There was a, there was a lot of pay to play. Um, yeah, it just it didn't have the same. Je ne sais quoi. Like, well, do they do they the die? Charm? Can you kill them? Yeah, you can still kill them. They, they, they fall like, off. They, they fall die. off and splat and there's blood, which was I was like, <laughs> that oh, was sure. like, this yeah. like, yeah, yeah I'm totally in. Okay. There's like they splat and blood and yeah. <laughs> So but, what change? Um, what change? Like what don't you like about this? What I don't like about it is like this, like collectibles and. Ah. So for those listening, the old game was just straight up platformer. Here's what happens: it, it, you, you, they they walk, they just do what they think they're supposed to do, and until somebody tells them stop walking here or start building this, they just die or get stuck right and then in the old game you they would get stuck and that was it like there was no getting out of it the new game has a it was and let me also say i was um i messaged my dad as soon as i downloaded it and i was like look what i found in because it was his computer that, and he used to play it right so i was like and also there's a fast forward option which is great because like you do something and then you can fast forward it and then like the lemmings go faster and then the, the, you finish. But it was like spin the wheel and oh, you can get an extra spin and getting the extra spin meant you had to, Oof. which I totally understand is the game is free. It technically is free, but yeah. you have to watch some commercials and I wish I'm totally fine with. I'll watch a commercial and, you know go go on but to really like win at the game i feel like you really have to pay for yeah. extra Oof. stuff so it, it was so it, is there yeah. is there also time gates where um where you can't do certain things mm -hmm. until like certain amount of time passes i did not money? run into a time gate no but there are uh, like you run out of energy and. Oh, that's a time gate. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, technically yeah. a time. Gate. You have to yeah. wait yeah. some time to do something different. So energy. Come yeah. back or tomorrow. You can pay more money. This is a phone game. Energy yeah. now. Phone game. It, I, so yeah, it's a phone game. Oh, it's OK. On, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it was it was on. Yeah, it was an Apple iPhone game. So that was a little bit disappointing because I was really looking forward to like the OG. Yeah. yeah. Like having the guy dig and dig and when you're like, oh, God, don't dig. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. oh, OK, he's digging. He's still digging. Yeah, he's, he's still, still digging, digging and, and he's going to fall to his dead. death. And then, oh, God, they're all coming in behind him. And they're <laughs> all going to die. And they all and they all splat. <laughs> and there's like freaking blood. And you and have like, like one guy with the umbrella who just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I was hoping <laughs> for. I, I got to be honest like that. I wanted the puzzle the old game. game. I wanted that. Yeah. It, so it is still puzzly, but. Uh, you, you can beat the there. game if you have a lot of money. Yeah, of course. Very quickly. Yeah, there's a lot of games like that. Yeah. That and sucks. and I just I kind of refuse to. Pay so this is where anything. someone's going to make a game like it called the Flemings and then they'll just. Yes. You'll play yes. that. And I will if you make. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. We all do that. I'll make a game pretty much like that. Not saying that out loud, but maybe don't done on a recorded podcast. Yeah, no, so. I would never do that on a recorded podcast. That'd be crazy. No, 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 no. That would be so silly. 
I know. So I played a game. <sighs> What'd you play? Is it the game? Fortnite. Oh, it's the game I was going to say. <laughs> what? I was going to say, I, d- I don't want to talk about this game, but I'm still going to talk about it because God. So dang it. it's amazing. We, mm. we, I said for science, for the podcast, yeah. mm-hmm. I was going to be, I was going to attend this air. Like I have no interest in Ariana Grande, but I've heard that they've oh, done concerts. We have in Fortnite. interest in Ariana Grande. I don't. No, not, not her music. Uh, no, her no, skins. not her at all. I mean, her skins, her skins, her She's, skins in Fortnite. She, she, she too itty bitty in the wrong places. Uh, like, no. Um, <laughs> not interested in her at all. Oh, man. Uh, but I was interested in the fact that they were doing concerts on Fortnite, and mm-hmm. I was like, uh, I was like, okay, that's I've heard of that before. I want to check it out. I want to check it out for the podcast. And then all of a sudden, I see Mike's in Fortnite. And he's like, and it, you know, I think I did that last time too. Uh, uh, yeah, I think much. so. It's okay though. Yeah, and essentially, you know, Mike gets in there and then we start, we're like, okay, well, we're early. Let's play some of the game. And then we go to the concert and then we're done with the concert. We're like, well, let's play some of the game. And as Mike said, I think literally yesterday, he goes more and more. I so wanted to not like this game and more and more. I find myself being more interested in mm-hmm. and sometimes even liking this game because what we found yet out yesterday was, well, technically it's today, but they, they, uh, they made it available yesterday. Today is the anniversary of Martin Luther King doing the famous, I have a dream speech in Washington, DC on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, yep. a very powerful moving speech yes. very a very pivotal and important moment in our country mm-hmm. and in all reality something that our country even today would do well to go back and actually listen to this man yes yeah. yes yes, uh, yes of, and yes. i'm not talking about i'm i'm not even talking about a set of people all people everybody, everybody. of Which this country and of other countries was all people yeah. should Yes. Actually go back and listen to the speech. So Mike said, uh, yeah, I, I had seen this and Mike jumped into Fortnite. He goes, well, Mike, you tell us. Yeah, I actually. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so we had seen like when you log in, there's like banners and stuff of like things you can click on. And there's all kinds of like, the game has all kinds of modes and it is what it is. Um, but there was one that had MLK. Like we saw Martin Luther King, like on this, this, like one a of walk like, his, through time. Yeah. Walk through time. It's like this very like time magazine type esque thing. And we're like, okay, it's like a banner and it flies. The next one you see like new event coming up, whatever. And I was like, what the hell is this? So like they were in a game like him and uh, secret Asian man were in a game already. So I was like, well, I have time. I'm just going to wait for them to get finished and I'll, you know, jump in, like see what this is about. And I was like, Oh, it's an experience. I'll have to click the button and join it. So it's like, all right, well guys, I'm going to join this thing and then wait for you guys to finish up and I'll join you, whatever. So, all right, cool. So I jump in this thing and I, I join in and I'm in a, like it, it loads into a, like a auditorium, like in a college. Right. So there's a large auditorium, like all these seats going down, like an amphitheater all the way down. And there's like the big projector screen. There's like some items on the left and right. And all these people are running around. They like they got signs and stuff I'm like, what the heck is going on? And there's a time uh, counting down to basically when we can explore this experience. And you can see the windows outside. It looks kind of like the Washington Memorial kind of area of D.C., but you can't really see. So time ticks down and we get like transported to this area and all of a sudden it's like, all you see is blackness. And then you see like the time magazine cover. And I said time magazine earlier, but that's literally what this is sponsored by Uh, time magazine. Mm -hmm. Like the, like the front of a cover uh, co-created like of the cover of the magazine. And it says time. And you just like, you're walking towards like the Lincoln Memorial. And when you get there, the front of the Lincoln Memorial, you see the actual, um, you actually see the podium 
of where Martin Luther King was standing. Uh, he's not, they're not like, they didn't digitize him, put him in the game or anything like that. But what they did do was put like projector screens all over the place where you could see the actual footage of the speech from DC at the time that he was giving it. So he was giving the speech. That's amazing. And during this time, they have, before you join, what it says is like, you have 20 minutes to complete all these games. There's all these different like time trial games all through there. And if you don't want to participate in that, that's fine. You can just watch the speech. So in the what in the um, Lincoln Memorial, there's like the video you can watch him in the middle of the Washington Memorial, like the big pool. There's actually a big like like monument you could watch on a projector screen there. Like what's going on? Um, but what was really you can hear, neat? You can hear the speech crystal clear yeah. no matter where you go. Yeah, it's like it playing just through beautiful. the game. And so there's different mini games. There's things you have to work together with your friends. You have, there's things you can work together with other people, which was a good point of this because it was about being in unity with other people, like people you don't know and people that you're not friends with, like just being well, and a that friend. Was, yeah. That, that was nearly a mind blowing part of this because there's all these people that came in. Right. But myself, Mike and one of our friends came in as a trio. And we were going around and like, oh, in each of the games in front of it, it's got a little uh, like monument looking uh, almost like marble slab. That's like, blah, 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 blah. You know, talking about, you know, the different thing. Right. You're like, oh, here we're you know showing unity with, uh, you know, these things. And, you know, they they like maybe quote part of the speech sometimes. And we go in there like, oh, this is a two player one. We go in there and we figured out we're doing two player and we're like, we should. But then we showed up and we're like. Oh man, this is a four player one. There's only three of us. Yep. And That's then all of a do. sudden this, this fourth person, th this, this other person shows up and stands by us. And then like, like it was like this pit, you had to jump in and you had to land on the, this thing through time. You had to land on these different platforms and they jumped in and we're like, okay, let's jump in. And it didn't matter that we were part of a party or not, because in Fortnite you join a party and you go in and you're part of a team and, you, and you, everything's team centric, you know, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter. It didn't matter who was on, who was with you or not. If you worked oh. together, regardless of whether you're on the same team or not, if you work together, you're able to accomplish the task at that section. It, and, and like, like literally, I think Mike stopped and go, oh, my God, that counted like yeah. Yeah. I he he exclaimed out loud. It was that like shocking yeah. to us that in a game that. It's definitely it not took about that into that account. Yeah. Yeah. So there was many moments like that. And overall, mm -hmm. you have 20 minutes, which is basically the length of the speech. So as the speech is going on, there's captions at the bottom where you can read what he's saying. You can hear what he's saying. Uh, there is oh, a museum. After after you complete each task, it takes you to another area. And it's usually something captured in time, like the uh, the the cafe where they did a, the lunch counter sit in. And oh, they wow. have a little uh, they have a little plaque there. They can read about, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, this. You know, this was at the Birmingham, uh, you know, uh, demonstrations or, you know, and this was, you know, uh, this is indicative of uh, Rosa Parks and the bus. And so you got to in, in your another one, talk about the Freedom Riders yeah. uh, with bus terminals and segregation. And it was really nice because. Mike said Mike said it. He's like. It's really nice with the average age that tends to play Fortnite mm -hmm. that they can be educated on this. Yeah, like yes. 35 to and, and to be honest, <laughs> to be honest, some like of it's me being educated 12? on this stuff too. <laughs> 35 to 20. No, so, but literally that. So it's like, I'm, I, I guess, I don't know, being a father, if it's like that, that thing that's just like in me now, but like literally thinking about like kids playing <laughs> no, this no, game. No, that thing's not in you anymore. And, yeah, not anymore, right? Uh, so like thinking about like kids playing this game and like like having his like so history is it's in, and I made this point the other day is that there is a lot of different cultures that play Fortnite. Right. This is not yeah. a U.S. only game. So you have 
people from all over the world that mm-hmm. Epic has put MLK into, and they're allowed to be able to listen. It's kind of like that Minecraft like library, be able to like enjoy a part of history and actually learn it from like what they're what they actually yeah. know. Not that just like, oh, it just disappeared. Like, no, they actually get to yeah. hear it. And, and and I'm not saying in the US like that we're skipping that, but we may like who knows? Like, I don't know what some school I've heard some crazy things about some schools that yeah. skip out on some history. And I'm like, what? So it was really cool to see like this in, instilled in something like Fortnite, where like I know a lot of little kids play this game, me included. Um, yeah. But it's it's really cool to see that being like just a part of that. And they're not only making the game, they're doing concerts. Yes but they're doing things like this. And this to me makes this game way better than anything else I've ever played because of the fact that they they are actually doing things like this to make you like also learn Mm -hmm. stuff, which is like I said, history buff. Like I love like learning new things and this is part of that. And I really enjoyed this experience. So if you have Fortnite or the ability to play Fortnite, I'd go check it out. Just download it. Play this experience because it's going to probably be gone by today. Actually, maybe tomorrow. Um, but it was just a great experience. It's you just can't find like, you don't have games like this. Yeah. Like, it's just it's a really cool thing that I'm glad I got to do. That's really yeah. cool. Uh, it was really <sighs> powerful and it was. Really powerful, ex- not only experience it almost like you were there, but also experiencing it through other people's eyes yeah. like me seeing mike react to it yeah was just as powerful as listening to it as well yeah i so, mean literally it like was pretty cool we were playing it we wanted a fourth player this is the last thing i'll say there's like a fourth player we need a fourth player to play this one game and we couldn't find anybody so i like i want to i'm gonna go see if i can find somebody so i just run over there and all we can do is emotes i'm like trying to do emotes right so i see this guy and he's like kneeling in this one spot in front of like the monitor and i was like i'm gonna go get him Phoenix is like, he ain't gonna, he's, dude, he's kneeling. Like, he's watching yeah. us. And I go over there, and I'm like, hey, you, like, thumbs up. And the dude was there the whole time, just kneeling, mm-hmm. watching yeah. the video. And that's all he did. And when he was done, yep. he just left. It was done. Yeah. He just watched the video. That's all he did. Yep. So, like, that's the kind of thing that was really cool to me to experience that. Like, that was really neat. So, yeah, it was amazing. <sighs> anyway. Really cool. Check it out. We're going to move on to the short news. Live from Muslim. No, cl- so clearly you did not watch the video of our last episode. No, you must have sped it up. Jesus. No, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus. What had nothing to do with this? Oh, my God. Jesus doesn't watch our show. Sorry. <laughs> you may. Uh, no, it, it, uh, yeah, yeah. I sped you up double. It was beautiful. Anyway, and since see. my countdown's already at 46 seconds, but that's okay <laughs> because this was pretty straightforward. Uh, there was this wonderful article about this guy who actually was playing PS five games on his iPhone. It is a official PS remote play app. Uh, it's very interesting looking. He played what looks like persona five. Uh, I could not imagine playing Fortnite on this. <laughs> uh, it does not look like it would work well with Fortnite, but still pretty cool that we are able to bring these games more universally and allow you to play them wherever you go. Yeah. yeah. Boom shakalaka. So they noticed that steam was selling a lot of games in certain regions. And one of those regions was actually Argentina. And they were like, why are these like games like just blowing up in Argentina? And they look at the percentage and they're like, United States, 1%, Canada, 1%, Russian Federation, 1%, Brazilia, 0%, 0%. Like all these things added up to 1%. And Argentina is at 95% of all these games being sold. And what we find out is that Argentina, the games are actually priced lower because of the the currency rate that they have there. Well, what was happening is people are actually region hopping, which means they basically change their VPN if they're in a different country uh, and change it to Argentina so that they can see in the store the prices of those games that are a lot cheaper. 
It goes a little further than that. There's a game called 9,000 Zombies or over 9,000 Zombies. And there was a certain uh, like trading card you can get from those. And you can actually sell those for a lot more money in the US market. So they would literally go there, do the shit, and then come back and then sell it for more. But also, you can't do that anymore. Well, you, there's like a three month waiting period. Steam has oh, made I it just, harder. D- uh, yeah, you can. Yes, it's it. Just in case you're right, wondering, you have to drink for this one because I was done and then you kept it going. So you drink. Oh, <laughs> don't she, throw me in that did. briar pit. <laughs> Wow. No, she's she's totally accurate. So Steam made a thing where uh, you can only region hop three times now mm-hmm. and also yeah. made it harder that your credit card has to be established in the country that you're apparently buying in mm-hmm. um, because yes. they're trying to cut down on this kind of activity. But yeah, people have made money we, on that. Yeah, I think we reported on that exact thing yeah. four or five weeks ago. Yeah, like killing. That. Uh, Duh. Uh, if you know exactly what episode that we report on that, send that in at GOA at sasgaming.com. There you and go. We'll read your yeah. email. We'll give you like a prize air. or something. I don't know. You will be able to play Fortnite with us. <laughs> God. Yes. Oh, no. So <laughs> Lance Barr was a Nintendo designer uh, for 38 years. He's just now retiring. He helped to design stuff for NES and Super NES. A couple of the things he did. Uh, he's retiring to move on to other projects. He redesigned, helped to redesign the NES and Super NES uh, and was primarily responsible for changing from the top loader to the front loader. Well, wow. oh. and also what I thought was really cool was the Wii Nunchuck. I so. Yeah. Yeah. Among many other things, but the Wii Nunchuck, I thought that was super cool. So. I mean, it was super cool. Yeah. Super Nintendo cool. Yeah. Super Nintendo cool. So, we talked about this earlier, but Discord has bots that you can use with API calls and webhooks and things like that. Um, but Google isn't very fond of one of these that I mentioned earlier. So, there is a Discord bot that you can use. It's by the creator of Groovy that allows you to be able to pull in YouTube videos and songs to a channel. And what happens is the bot joins your channel and then it has a volume that you have to turn down because it's really loud. And then it plays based on what you search for keywords. It searches YouTube and just plays the audio to the channel uh, versus playing the video. Um, But Google, since they own YouTube, uh, decided to send a cease and desist to the creator groovy because they don't like the fact that they're playing all these art, like the music for free to everyone and not really getting the royalties for that. Uh, So they basically sent that over and they're going to have to take down the discord bot, which kind of sucks. So you guys know that I am a fan of miniature things. I (laughs) made a (laughs) miniature. (laughs) coffee house now i'm gonna go over my 60 seconds um my miniature coffee house is a uh, one twelfth scale oh my god but there is a 166 scale uh model of the rocket that our space cowboy jeff bezos uh <laughs> flew in um <laughs> It does look like a personal massager, so I almost accidentally bought it. But <laughs> I may just buy it because it's miniature as well. Uh, it oh does actually fly. And you can fly. shoot it off. It, you can yeah, shoot it well, off. Uh, it, it, it'll, uh, we can shoot it off, but I'll let you know how it goes. Um, so it's $69.99, um, but you can pay $109.99. <laughs> $69. <laughs> and so I thank you. Thank you for getting that. Uh uh, you can get the whole starter set well, that'll include the, the launch pad, the controller, the single use engine. But I I haven't heard of any vibrating motion i get it i'll do more research yeah i'll I'll, i'm i'll i'll report back on that one next week all right drink because you're over (laughs) cheers can't can't oh 
wow, you better restart mine on that. Um, okay. E A Sports in the game is the worst <laughs> company in the world. Uh, as a, as as stated in Consumerist Rating, okay. April 2012. Uh, they awarded them the worst company in America uh, due to record-breaking poll. This is per the Wikipedia article. More than 250,000 votes, uh, and they beat out AT&T and Walmart. They were the first company to win it consecutively two years in a row with winning it 2013 as well. So the worst company in the world wants to make things better. They want to give a better outlook for everyone, and... They actually have. Uh, they've pledged not to sue or not to uh, prevent people from using any of their patents that are for accessibility. So anything that they create for accessibility in their games is going to be free for everybody to use. Well, Second worst company in the world, AC Activision Blizzard. <laughs> uh, has New worst. Right yeah. Now. Literally awful um, has been accused of shredding documents um, by the oh God. Department of Fair Employment and Housing. This is super legit. Um, they're they're inter directly interfering with their ability to investigate, prosecute and remedy workplace discrimination, harassment violations on behalf of the employees and contingent or temporary workers. The documents uh, related to the investigation and complaints were shredded by Activision Blizzard's Human Resources Department and personnel. Um, yeah, that's totally legal. The, it's fun. Yeah, I'm sure. Because I know it when I'm innocent of what I'm being accused of yeah. that I shred a whole bunch of documents. Exactly. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 that's normal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Totally, totally normal. Totally, totally, totally normal. So if you're a fan of Fallout, as I am, there is a new mod coming out called Fallout London, which is going to take us Fallout 4 modded to London, which we haven't seen yet. Across the pond has not been a thing that we've seen in the world of Fallout yet. Um, what's very interesting, though, there was a, a modder, uh, which was the head writer of the highly anticipated Fallout London mod, uh, Stephanie Zacharyd, Zacharyd, I just, oh, man, that's a long name. Oh, my name. God. I can't. I murdered it's that a, one. It's uh, Suez. It's Suez. <laughs> Kidding. Anyway, <laughs> so they actually announced that she's leaving the team of Fallout London because she's been hired and she's joining the designer group at Bethesda Game Studios because Bethesda has announced that they're hiring her. So the game, the mod looks really great. You can search it on YouTube, mm. Fallout London official reveal trailer. And it, I mean, it captivates Fallout to a T. So I can't wait to play it, but awesome that she got a job as a modder. Mm -hmm. like, Heck yeah, I love that. I loved this article. So... The Activision side of Activision uh, Blizzard, who uh, makes worst a lot of games, <laughs> worst company, uh, which makes a lot of games like Call of Duty, Call of Duty. Oh, wait, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Oh, wait, that oh. was made by a different studio. And then they bought mm. that studio. Mm. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. OK, maybe Crash Bandicoot. Call of Duty, Crash Bandicoot, Tony Hawk, Call of Duty. Uh <laughs> Well, yeah, they pretty much officially just make Call of Duty now. In fact, Treyarch, uh, excuse me, Sledgehammer Games is going to be uh, leading development on the new Call of Duty game Vanguard. Treyarch is handling zombies. Okay. The mode. And Raven is going to be leaving Warzone. They're free to play, uh, oft uh, plagued with mini cheaters call of duty esque game that's on the internet so yeah they make a lot of call of duty now yeah basically so james mcavoy who i love almost as much as i love Ryan shout Reynolds, out. who i love almost as much as my husband um almost. uh who is also the voice of the husband in 12 minutes <laughs> 
Thanks for stepping on my toes, Mike. Sorry. I'll drink to talking over this one. Um, played Elder Scrolls for Oblivion so much that he almost ruined a role of a movie in, in becoming Jane. Um, he would play until like four in the morning, go to bed at 10 or say, oh, OK, I'm, I'll play at 10 until four in the morning. And then at one point he got home from filming, played it until eight p played it at eight PM until five thirty five AM and then the car to take him to the studio picked him up at six AM and he was like, This is a problem. So he literally took the disc, Xbox three sixty <laughs> disc, threw it in the oven, and like watched it like shrivel. <laughs> Said I had to destroy it. <laughs> oh, Sorry, that's Oblivion. pretty Sorry, amazing. James. Yeah, that's some that that's like really you're really looking inward and going. No, I can't do this anymore. I I, I have done that with something else. We're not going to talk about it, but no. Oh. The Red Rock earlier. Really or... I mean, no, that's still <laughs> maybe maybe we will. We'll talk about that. Uh, I two mean, weeks from now. It's also interesting that the 10 year anniversary of Skyrim is coming up on November yeah. 11th and you'll probably be able to play Skyrim on your microwave yes. or <laughs> refrigerator. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's why I said microwave because the refrigerator is much larger and can hit do much more uh, CPU true. cycles. It's got cooling built in. I mean, it's already I mean, on the switch. On. I mean, it can definitely handle the microwave mm. and the toaster. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. As soon as uh, Xbox releases the, fridge. Uh, the Xbox refrigerator, I'm going to it's going to make this podcast so much easier because mm -hmm. I'll just be able to be like, yep, booze, up, booze. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's going to make it a lot more silly too. A guaranteed. Silly is not so, the word I would use, but yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> Uh, there was this person that a long time ago they spent uh, at the time what was equivalent to one dollar of Xbox bucks, whatever it is, and purchased a blue, uh, the blue ghost, the scared ghost in Pac-Man uh, for oh. their for their like user icon. So they, they were like, oh, this is super cool. And. They had that for the longest time and loved it. But uh, this is from the Xbox 360. And as they threw through the Xbox one and now on the Xbox Series X or Series S and X, it just kept because of iterations through the user mm -hmm. interface and everything, it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it was basically this unidentifiable little blue dot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. that's so funny. So, oh, man, so funny. Eden Marie, uh, the, the person who had this tweeted out and said, man, it was I still say it's the best effing dollar I've ever purchased, uh, which, by the way, it still costs the same amount now. Or really, yeah. it's just now it costs two dollars and thirty eight. It's interesting that uh, the Xbox bucks have gone up with inflation. And equally. yes, um, but uh, th no it shrinkage. was like 15 years ago. <laughs> or this is an example of shrinkage, actually. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, uh, Sorry. Newcon, uh, in O U K O N on Twitter said, man, it's a real bummer that I can't use this anymore. Best effing dollar I've ever spent. Right. And so this engineer at Xbox, Eden Marie, she was like, Oh, let me look into this. And she started playing around with it. And found out a whole bunch of interesting things and was actually able to fix it. Yes. And oh, found out it. that the, uh, the, like it was originally built as a square that there actually was transparencies in the icons in the 360 age. She was like, who knew? Uh, she goes, she goes, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes you uh. learn something like, like apparently 360 gamer picks supported transparencies all along question mark oh, surprise. Wow. Anyway, what do you think? And so she was able to make changes, not just to the icon, but to the infrastructure so that other icons like this could work again. 
And Eden credited her ability, uh, according to this Verge article, to update Nukon's avatar to Xbox policy. Uh, well, she credited it to Xbox policy of allowing its engineers free time to tinker with whatever they like within the platform. That's I love really that we cool. do it. And this week, I absolutely chose it to rescue ghosts. That's oh, awesome. that is so cool. I love that. <sighs> super cool. Well, hey, if you want to send something super cool to us, send us an email at GOA at sasgaming.com. But this week, that's what got our attention. And if you're interested in checking us out on other than the podcast, you can check us out live on Twitch next week. Not so much, but we'll tweet about that. Uh, but if you want to support us in a different way, well, you can live, check us out on just not on Twitch. Yeah. If you want to check us out on a different way, you can check us out on the Patreon. So patreon.com slash SAS gaming. But we really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for bearing through my shit. I guess that most people would have to say because it's it's a it's a feat to like deal with me. I guess it's fun. Um, <laughs> everything's fun. Everything's fun. We do it because we love you, Mike. Yeah, anyway. Happy uh, birthday, And Mike. Brian's, like, constantly, it's like, just cut it out, cut it out, don't say anything. Happy birthday, Mike. Oh, shit, it's, it's, it's my birthday. It's your birthday. It's actually my birthday. I was born, Happy birthday. like, eight hours from now, I was actually born. <laughs> but, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, that's what we, Eight hours what, from now, Mike shows up on WikiFeet. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's what got us, uh, got our attention this week. And uh, we love you guys. And we'll talk to you again next week. And... You know, just stay safe out there. Just do what you got to do and we'll see you when we see you. <laughs>